Hello and welcome to the first ever episode of our brand new show, Centre Spot. The show for all you fellow sporting addicts out there and even the casuals that just want to stay up to date with all the news, gossip and action from around the sporting world. We have some amazing guests lined up, a silly amount of content ideas. These will be dropping every Saturday over this summer period, so please stay tuned, please subscribe and on that note, let's get into the show. I'm Freddie and I'll be trying to keep in check the absolute mayhem that is likely about to commence before your eyes or your ears. And with me today, I have the only man that could plead guilty and still win. The only thing he cannot talk his way out of is being a Spurs fan. It is Kevin Lee! Love to be here. Next to him, there's no man on this planet that loves a yellow or a red card more than him. He is our gambling correspondent. Andy Robson, be very afraid. It is Bonza. Bonzino! <laughs> Up next, we have the man fighting the battle for Europe against the Brits. It's the German resident, the Bayern fan, is Nicky A. <laughs> and finally, he is as solid of a bloke as he is at centre back on Wednesday night, seven asides. The only thing that lets him down is his love for Manchester United. It's Nife. <laughs> How are we doing, boys? Yeah, Freddie. I like it. It's a pleasure. I like it. Yeah? Yeah. You like it? Yeah. We buzzing? Yeah. Just let's get into it. <laughs> Come on. There's only one place to start. The record transfer for a British player. 105 million. 100 million guaranteed. 5 million add-ons, according to Horny Horny, aka David Ornstein. It's Rice Rice Baby. Cabers Lee, I'm very interested to hear your opinion on this. Are yeah. we going to be propelled to the title? Look, are the Gooners? <laughs> Fred, as a as a as a Spurs fan, as one of the Spurs fans on the panel, um, it, it, it pains me to say it really does. But Arsenal, I think Arsenal are cooking. Wow. Um, and rice is one of the main ingredients. They're making them wow. the boys, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, that's what they're doing. That's what they're cooking up right now. Um, yeah, it's a good signing. I've kind of been praying, spending the last two weeks hoping that Man City came and swooped in. What I will give Man City credit for, and I don't know if you agree with me, for, agree with me here, boys, but they've they pushed up the price to a nice 15, 20 million pounds. Agreed. That 90 million bid they put in, they never wanted rice. They just saw Arsenal, they thought of that, and they thought, you know what, let's make these guys pay an extra 20 million. So I'm, a, I'm disappointed that City didn't buy him. It's a great signing for Arsenal, but if there's one sort of recipe for me, it would be that Arsenal had to pay an extra maybe 20 million, then I think he's worth. <laughs> I think that's a 90, maybe an 80 million pound signing in this market. I think 105 is maybe a little bit over the top, but a good sign. It pains me because that's, that's I do think the City bid yeah. was just to, just, yeah, to they, make they a bit of a little more, because it was exactly the same, the same bid essentially. Yeah. But you know what? Any Aluko, it was not that, yeah, where Mikel Arteta, <laughs> called any, uh, called, Mikel Arteta called Pep and said, up yeah. the price. Yeah. It was Big not time. that. Yeah. But it did seem like they were just making those pain balls. And also, I would say too, is that I don't think Arsenal have ever made a signing like this before. Well, it's a player that everyone in the world would want. He would go in any, pretty much any team in the world starting lineup. Arsenal have gone out, they've put the money down, and they, they've made it happen. And they've, 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 sort of, they've, they've had a strong season, they've built on that. And as, again, as much as it pains me to say it, but I think it's a, it's a solid little signing, and I'm jealous. Oh, so yeah. I like that, I like that. It was Ooh. quite the transfer saga. We had Bayern get big daddy by Arsenal as well. At some point, supposedly. But I'd even posted, Thomas Tuchel spoke to Declan Rice so well that West Ham posted a TikTok of Declan Rice coming out saying, Guten Tag. Sent shivers through the Arsenal fan base. Bayern euphoria. Absolutely. But Nicky A, what were you saying about that? I'm okay with it. I would have liked Declan Rice 100%. I think we need a six in the team. So I was also upset about it. Even more so upset about a very annoying Freddie Walker in my ear every <laughs> single day. But... Rice, we're rice, baby. We're, we have, we're not silly with our money. I think 120 million euros, as we do it in Europe, <laughs> is a lot of money on a DM. But as Cam said earlier, I think he put it quite well. I mean, he's a player that most teams would want, maybe besides Real Madrid. So and Man United. And Man United. <laughs> they're focusing on other things. But yeah, I mean, what can I say? Arsenal, definitely interesting. Great signing so far. We'll see how it goes. Nife. Just on that point that you just made, is it true that you bid 40 million plus a fridge and look sourceless for Declan Rice? <laughs> is that honest, true? To be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if it was true. And if I was West Ham, I would have taken it. But what? all I've got to say <laughs> Taken is, it? Yeah, of course you take it. What? We're getting Harry Maguire, Scott McTominay is the replacement for Rice yeah. and 40 oh, mil. Maybe. I think it's a good deal. I don't hate that. Also, to, to jump in too, something that Man City could have done, send Calvin Phillips the other way 
and maybe pay like eight. I think that's a great deal for West Ham. I'm not doing that. Wrong. I think Philip doesn't do that. Yeah, yeah. Fairs. I think that's why I, I didn't have that. Would have been a great deal. But we mm. also have to remember, right? I know Fred's going to come out with technicalities of West Ham had an option and blah 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 blah. He had one year left on his contract. He had two years left. No, no, no. Okay, let's let's speak about it in factual terms. He had one year left on his contract. So you've paid a hundred and five million yeah. for someone who's a DM with two years left. Who's not gonna? <laughs> <laughs> we'll agree to disagree on that one, right? Yeah. But he's not gonna get you goals. Yes, he's gonna do the DM role. But does a DM really cost a hundred and five million? The answer is no. It depends. Last it's summer, let's just, let's just put this out there. Last summer, you guys gave us a load of crap for paying 70 mil for Casemiro, one of the best DMs we've ever seen in world football. So let's talk right. about it. I think you'll find that the Casemiro deal I was, I was upset about because it was, it was a good deal. Like, I, I, I wasn't upset about Man U. Like, I wasn't upset about Man U getting him. I was annoyed that you got him because it was a good deal. Also, it, you, had, you had one of the best DMs gotta, and that's what you needed. You've got to consider age in it too. Casemiro, I get where you're coming from, but Vice, how old is he? Like 24, 25? Yeah. Tops? Yeah. He's going to be around for the next eight, eight years yeah. potentially, but maybe eight, nine, eight, ten years. And then also too, I hate it just as much as anyone else, but the English tax, that comes into yeah, it. English tax. So, no, yeah. If you're doing well, teeth, unbelievable signing. Yeah. <laughs> no, look, look, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm punting <laughs> cameras now. Okay? <laughs> I've got to come out, I'm just going to try and be unbiased. Can we also um, be honest, right? You paid 105 million for Rice. Rice is not staying at Arsenal for more than eight years. He will go. He will go. Take eight years, man. He will go to Man City in the next four years. Clip me on that one. Oh, I will, I will oh, clip you on that. Yeah, yeah. we will. Yeah. We'll be four years down the line. Oh, 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 oh. We're not even ten minutes in, Nifa. <laughs> <laughs> A four-year clip down the line already. Okay, sweet. I think Mikel Arteta's riz is unmatched. On the phone, that guy speaks to any player. And they immediately want to come to us. Oh, mate. Well, Tommy, no? T- Tommy Tuchel gets him to say good morning. Okay. <laughs> it's just our finances aren't like that. He he did. Did. Yeah, fair. I feel, I feel like Arsenal, yes, off the back of a good season, yeah, everyone's got a bit giddy and yeah. thinks they're the next big cheese. That's right? valid. Let's, let's put it into context. You bottled the league. This is going <laughs> off topic, Max, but you That's bottled facts. the league. So if you want to be challenging like you guys say you should be, yeah. you should be spending the money. And I don't want to hear in 12 months time, oh yeah, we spent money, but Man United have spent, that's not the facts. Yeah. We know we should have been challenging, we didn't. Yeah. So we want to see you do it. And if you don't, you bottled it again. So yeah, no, I, I agree, but I think the signings that we've made this summer are covering, I know everyone always says it's excuses, the Saliba injury last year cost us the league. I'd argue that that is a genuine reason why Arsenal dipped in form. When Rob Holding has to come in instead of Saliba, that's a genuine reason why Aldini, you we, we, we dip in form <laughs> but and then the season before with the Champions League it was it was party and Kieran Tierney that got injured so now during Timber coming in as backup for Saliba Ben White that that those options there if that does happen if during Timber does happen then that's a lot of depth you have Kai Havertz who we can now oh, talk about oh, oh, it, oh. who is coming in as a, as a cam a right wing striker right wing striker back up but I think predominantly as a left attacking midfield and I was very excited by Havertz when it first kind of got announced because I saw the Mikel Arteta plan over time it's 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 decreased the (laughs) excitement but I still think it could be a good signing um but let's talk about Havertz's output what's he actually apart from score a jammy goal in the Champions League final What's he yeah. actually got? Scored a winner in the Champions League final, you fell. Come on. I'm it's not going to name off the top of my head, but it's I reckon some good. very average players have scored goals in the Champions yeah. League final. Nick, what are you saying about Havertz to Arsenal? The Bundesliga expert. Um, when he excelled. Well, he excelled. He didn't play striker. So I think uh, it's really interesting, in my opinion. I think uh, Havertz is a, almost a luxury player. I think he's not going to... If you're Burnley, you don't want to have it because you need players around you. Of course, Leverkusen also isn't Man City but in a free-flowing system they play great football and Havertz were great uh, Havertz was a super exciting player and may the record show though that in history it's always not looked good for players that leave the Bundesliga and not want to be signed by Bayern and we didn't <laughs> sign Havertz De Bruyne we wanted to didn't have the money great player Havertz we made the decision against obviously we have Thomas Müller so it's different but I think it's super exciting I want him to do well I mean Germany's been uh, 
essing the bed recently. Yeah. And <laughs> so we, we need someone. And I'd love for Havertz to do well. I, it's but he's been bad for Germany as well, right? Like he, he, he has. I been. think he's better for Germany than he is for Chelsea. Yeah? I think for Germany also he's been playing nine a lot. Uh, and I just I, he's just not a nine. I think it's it's super evident. And I think um, yeah. There's a great video of Tommy Tuchel speaking about him when he was at Chelsea, where they asked him what he thinks what player for everybody is, and it's he even himself says he hasn't figured it out. And I think if you haven't figured it out at once, it's I like a player when you know where, what position he plays. But what, let's see. What did Arsenal pay for him in the end? Sixty-five well, million. Did, and what did Chelsea pay for him when they signed him? No idea. Uh, it, was like it, 80, it was 80. like eighty, but I think it's actually like seventy-one million pound. Right. I don't know. I mean, the I the actual fee that we have in our heads is is euros for mm. Havertz. Uh, they sat, but, but actually, it's nice adults, adults, isn't it? Like, yeah. I, just, I don't know. Like, I, it is I, a surprising I, I fee. Rate, I think he's, he reminds me a bit of Timo Werner, like yeah. a bit underrated. Like, finally, hasn't stepped up in every single game, but he's shown that he's got like a bit of ability yeah. about him. And he's the got some time. The upside is definitely there. I mean, 100%. the player is in there, and he and I mean, as MB said earlier, I mean, yeah, he did score his goal in the Champions League final. And he also in that Germany game where we got knocked out in the in the World Cup just now. He was also it was the m- most important game for the World Cup for us. I mean we got knocked out, but we won. And he scored I think two goals. We got man of the match with that legendary photo of him looking very upset while holding a man of the match. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I mean, pff, there's a play in there. Let's wait and see if Ateta gets it, gets it out of him. I, yeah. I think I think we also have to bear in mind we're talking about top level professionals, right? If how old is he? Twenty six? No, he's younger. He's twenty four. Twenty four 24 or something. Yeah. You haven't figured out, and no coach you've played for has figured out what position you yeah. you should play. Yeah, it's a bit of a problem. But I think that's more Chelsea, not like that. They didn't have a striker that <laughs> that was performing, so they were like, okay, that's the next best option. Whereas if you look at him at Leverkusen, and he predominantly I'm played performance. Yeah, <laughs> arguably Jesus. He's performing in the system. Like, yeah, he's, arguably he's Jesus, but I think you, you he's not a bagsman. But yeah. that would be because like, if you're signing to be a backup striker, he's literally just failed in that role at Chelsea. So like, I, I heard the other day that he might be part of like a like a midfield three with Odegaard. Yeah, and like part and part That is is. that is a hundred percent what it is. That, that, yeah, I, I get that. We though. we had so Jacker a lot of the time last year was pushing up into most of the time he's playing left attack in midfield yeah. that's why Xhaka got so many goals and maybe not assists but he, he got a lot of goals for Xhaka's output last year normal output so Kai Havertz will play and that's a dangerous attack Saka <laughs> Martinelli Jesus Havertz Odegaard Declan Rice behind that's, that's pretty scary so I think we can all agree that Arsenal Ben Bonza you, you can answer gonna, this one <laughs> I was just going to chime in on, the, on yeah. the general Arsenal transfer topic Obviously, we've, we've covered Rice already. I'm not going to touch too much on that. <laughs> it's not what you want to see. Arsenal already signed or virtually signed Rice. Havertz, 65 mil. Timber, I think, another 40, 45 from what I've seen. We're not in July yet. So it, it's quite concerning from a, from a Tottenham perspective. I think it's interesting, and it comes back to where Havertz plays. I think if you, if you asked Arsenal fans two, three weeks ago before the links arise, <laughs> Havertz, 65 mil, I, they're probably going to say no. <laughs> Since then, we've seen Chelsea throughout the past season, the stats. I think he came first for about eight or nine different stats. Yeah. And I think there's more faith than anything in Arteta's scouting ability and the scouts around him to say Havertz could fit in here or there quite nicely. I think, personally, take the stats away, I think it's too much money. Agreed. And as oh. Nife said as well, you're coming up to your mid-twenties and you haven't solidified a, a position, whether you're... Yeah. False nine, you're playing in, in the left, left hand side as an attacking midfielder. My other thoughts are although Xhaka played a bit more advanced, I think seven goals, seven assists in the league, all that team being a bit more unbalanced. Partey yeah. potentially going out, Rice coming in, I don't, I don't think in that aspect, but Xhaka perhaps more defensive ability than, than someone like Havertz, and then obviously yeah. Odegaard the other side too quiet. It's almost player. making like Rice have to make up yeah. too much. I exactly. think that's also a very good point that Ben makes. The team is now as exciting as it is attacking yeah. in an Arsenal perspective, right? <laughs> it's now incredibly unbalanced. Yeah. You've got Rice that's going to be expected to do a Casemiro job. But can he do that? We've not, we've, we've not seen him he do probably it. probably so could. I don't want to say he can't. Guy covers do. ground like a cheetah. <laughs> it's rapid. Right, we're getting rapid. rapid. I see, cheetahs are very quick. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He moves. See, that's the Arsenal Gideon. <laughs> <laughs> that would be my one concern too is, mate, un- unbelievable signings. Don't, don't get me wrong, but... Yeah. 
Like, I just feel like I'm thinking about that team lining up and is it, we know the level of the Premier League, everyone comes at you, everyone's relentless. Is it too a little bit on the attacking side? I, I thought Arsenal, were, they were pretty threatening going forward last year. I, I kind of thought that it was, it was the defence that they needed to kind of solidify and if you know what I mean, get a couple uh, more reinforcements. I know you're getting Timber in and stuff like I that. I think so. that, yeah, I think that's yeah. where we will improve this but, year with, with Timber yeah. and so I mean, I just think if Timber does happen, that's just a, a good signing. But Centre back, right back. It's interesting because City, well, at least if you believe the reports or if you believe your theory that they just wanted to increase the price point, they didn't want Rice as a six. They wanted Rice as a Gundogan replacement. Oh, really? So at least that's what the reports say. The Athletic, who we at least seem to be relatively credible. <laughs> it's super interesting. I don't know. It's going to be really interesting how Rice plays that role. I think you've got to also respect him for taking the Arsenal move. I, Freddie and I had long discussions about this topic. I don't know what it says about me as a person, but I wouldn't have blamed him for taking the City route. No, not at all. But I, I think, I mean, as a football fan, I think it's cool. I think it's cool he yeah. takes the Arsenal. I think he's, it's cool he has the ambition to make Arsenal great. Um, but he I could play that eight role at Arsenal as well. Like he, the Havertz is not 100% in that eight role. It could, I mean, we still are yet to see what's going to happen with Thomas Partey. Yeah. But if Thomas Partey still stays, then there's that potential for him to play in the eight but at Man City he didn't have the potential to play in the six yeah. because of Rodri. Rodri but I think is is that not an issue for you you've just said that Havertz oh. is not 100% to play in that eight role and you've just signed Rice and the news is like party is going to go elsewhere probably because of other issues as well does that not concern you you signed a player that every Arsenal fan I've heard says is going to play this position but even in your mind you're doubting whether he can and whether he's going to be good at it. And also, that's, it's, a, it's an interesting topic because it's like, you guys believe so much in Arteta and what he does and how he's going to mould the team and stuff. Yeah. But if you doubt it, he, Kai Havertz is going to doubt it because he's going to see this pod, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to see other pods and he's just going to keep thinking, oh, can I actually do it? And that is, he's a player, he's a confidence player. He's, no, but he's versatile. He's there to be a versatility player. That's why we paid the 65 million for him because he gives back up to Saka, which we didn't really have. Mm. Unless you consider Marquinhos and potentially Reese Nelson as a right wing backup to, to the, that. yeah but that's to protect value and whatever but we could maybe sell on Reese Nelson and, and recoup some of that but the it's like with Eddie but the we we have Kai as a backup that is potentially a better quality player than Eddie at centre forward if yeah. we need it because in the system the centre forward doesn't need to be an Arsenal like the, the key guy but so, but he will link play nicely if he ever plays there and Jesus mm -hmm. gets another long injury. Then we have him to cover Saka and he's definitely more quality than what we have on the right wing so far as backup. And then we have him as the, as the camp. And then you also have Declan Rice. And I don't know, if Thomas Partey goes, then we'll get another midfielder in, I think. 65 for a so, backup. Yeah, we'll, we will see. Love you. Love you. But I think we can all agree yeah, that so far, Arsenal have won the transfer window. Right? Yeah, of course, but I think yeah. uh, I think you <laughs> guys. <laughs> I think they've made their moves early. Yeah. No one else yeah. has really no. bit the so, bullet. So far, United, so far, United radio silence. Absolutely yeah. nothing there. We actually haven't signed Rice yet, and yeah. I, Fabrizio did say <laughs> in one of his tweets. I think on Wednesday, it will be today or tomorrow. Here we go, and we haven't got a here we go. Is so. it just the like <laughs> it, the order the payments basically? That's what they're saying, yeah. but it's it's taking longer than I would yeah. expect for that to happen so I mean, it, it hasn't actually happened as Sydney of again, just football manager. You've, you've done a football manager where you pay, pay you pay 80 million over about five years yeah, yeah. Actually yeah. 15 million years. <laughs> but yeah okay so arsenal we're good we're doing well, we'll, we'll see you about that. let's go on to the noisy neighbor spurs let's start with the good news james madison great signing in Very my opinion signing. Very i was saying I think we've been screaming out for a player of his ability since Eric Ericsson's left. Yeah. We needed someone that's going to be creative in midfield, link the midfield with the attack. If you look latter end of the latter stages of the season, we had Hoiberg and Skip, which is next to no creativity whatsoever. So nasty. Um, I think new manager's going to play four three three. There's going to be two eights. So I think he's going to fit in nicely there, perhaps on the right hand side. Alternatively, he could go on the right wing with Kulisewski sort of changing. I think it's really exciting. And I think 40 million as well in this market is Good deal. Good deal. Um, I'm surprised I, we got him so easily and quickly. Yeah. Newcastle were linked. Apart from that, I would have thought Villa potentially. Um, I mean, I hate to say it, but Spurs it, probably do win a battle against Villa in the transfer market, but. <laughs> no, don't, don't, don't disagree there. But 
I'm just surprised there's not more teams sniffing around and I think it's it feels unusual for Tottenham to do their business so quickly and so easily. Usually we have a, a three, four week. Yeah, it did happen quick. It, uh, I, yeah. I remember uh, thinking like the Madison thing just progressed yeah. really quickly. And I, I would just say for all his faults, and I probably I probably am Levy out after all the messing around over the past few years, sacking Jose Mourinho five days before the final, etc. Et <laughs> right, don't even get me started on that. And maybe this is a conversation for another day. But I think it does show that I think Levy, for all his faults, he is the best operator in, in world football. You look at Arsenal, they just paid a, they just paid, no listen, listen, right? They just paid, Arsenal just paid a hundred, <laughs> Arsenal just fired. Wait, 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 oh, listen, this is a big shout. I know, it's episode one. Wow. Okay? But you still have to get used to, right? No, because he is, right? Because he's, 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 he's gone out, he's secured himself in English talent. We all go on about English tax. 40 million for Hamez Madison. Yeah, but he had just been relegated. Yeah, but... And no one else did. Uh, well, yeah, but still, but that's, look, and that's, I just think, I think his ability to go out and maximise money that we're going to come in, and I know like, I've got this Kane situation going on, we'll see how that plays out, uh, that could prove me wrong, but I think this is, a, Arsenal's just paid 105 million for Declan Rice, are you telling me that James Madison is two and a half times worse a player than Declan Rice is? I, don't, I, don't, I, think, mm. I think he's gone out, he's found himself a good deal in the market, and for all of his faults, and there are many, I think there are many, like, I am, I think he is, I do trust him with, with looking after our bucks, I have to say. To be, that is one of his only po po positives that he brings he, to us. I was gonna say, he's a fantastic businessman. He's not who you want as a fan to be at the top of your club. Yeah. And he's I, been there for 20 years. I'd rather years. have a guy who came out and paid 50 million for Madison and he paid 25 million for Jack Gre Grealish for eight years ago when that, when that happened. But, that, that just, but I do also respect when he gets a good deal done. I'm like, you know that what? That doesn't that's make him the best, the best in the world. Fine, maybe, I, maybe a bit hyperbole. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm, a bit, yeah, I'm a little yeah. bit nervous. You know, I might have overspoken there, but yeah, he's a good operator. He is a good businessman. He's he's a, he's a good businessman. The way he's dealt with the stadium and everything, and you guys can actually still spend money with your stadium. Uh, stadium that's crazy. Which yeah. is nuts because they spend. And again, a billion? Look at, look at about Everton. a billion on the stadium? Yeah, like, it was supposed to be oh, 300 So for you to even be able to spend bank money bank in the transfer market. I think it was supposed to be 300 million yeah. spent on the, on, the, on the stadium and it ended yeah. up being over a billion. So yeah. 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 It's a beautiful stadium. And I you're still able to spend money. I had so. a few Arsenal fans at the time saying, or two years ago, saying that we're going to have a big lull, which I mean, that was me. Case. <laughs> Probably you, you were on, Freddie, because similar to, to what you had and experienced after, after your new stadium, playing, what, yeah. 15 years ago, 2008? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's yet to see, but we're still, we're still spending. Yeah, we broke the um, we've broken our transfer record the since thing we opened the stadium, haven't we? Like, we're not on Dumbale. No, so so like, def definitely. I think, I think the thing that I'm, we're all waiting now is to see what happens with Kane. There's, there's yeah. pros and cons to it. He's got one year left on his contract. If he goes to Bayern, then of course, we're not strengthening or massively strengthening a rival. We're getting 60 million. However, usually with Tottenham, if we get a X amount fee in, we're not spending that in a direct replacement. We're probably spending it across, just like the Bale seven players. Spend on Soldado. Not, not, not that extreme, not that extreme, but yeah. So we, we, we wouldn't be strengthening rival in that case. I think Daniel Levy probably looks at it as, if we have Kane, we come here in the league. If we don't, it costs us this much. We can't get, we can't replace Kane. We don't, no. There's no direct replacement. Um, Nick, do you think you up that bid from 60 million? Yeah, 100%. You do? Uh, 100%. I think yeah. we rarely bid for players when we don't get an okay. I think it's a huge statement to get an okay from Harry Kane. Even though I sometimes don't sound that, I, I do understand the, the beauty, uh, obviously the beauty of the Prem and obviously the, the whole idea of breaking Alan Shearer's record. However, at the same time, I think, obviously I'm only here with Brits, but you can't tell me the record scorers of most other leagues. I, I think yeah. obviously it's, it's a big flex. I think it's very cool to say you've scored the most goals, but in the end effect, you want to look back and say, hey, I won these things. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people say a Bundesliga title is not worth a Prem. I think that's completely fair. It's still winning a title. I mean, this year was the 11th in a row. Crazy. I could even say that. I could have never imagined that as a kid growing up. But the 11th, obviously, granted, it was a crazy one, but it felt as good as the first. That's, I never get bored of it. I think none of us fans get bored of it, and I think it installs a winning mentality. I think it's good for England, by the way. I think if Kane, the English captain, goes to Bayern and goes to, is in a mindset where we want to win and I think what people also don't realise is 2025 a champ <coughs> Champions League final is in Munich we have a very bad memory with the last one in Munich obviously losing on penalties to uh, Chelsea so do Spurs fans Nick um, <laughs> so do Spurs fans of course <laughs> 100% right. Uh, I mean, I'm still sorry about that. Um, they changed the rules. My dad cried. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I also got, ever. They I got the great decision. I got carried out of the stadium. I was crying so much. It was a, it was a tough day. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I, let's see. I think Mr. Daniel is very tough to negotiate with. So I'm, I'm not saying it's going to happen. 
Uh, I would like the old Spurs boys back at Bayern, though. I think, or not back, but start Bayern. H Harry Kane and Kyle Walker. <laughs> uh, yeah. play, win some Bundesliga titles, maybe compete for a Champions League, because that's the expectation. Why not? It'd be I, nice. I, I'd would, like I, would, I would quite happily give up 100 mil or 80 mil or 60 million euros if, if Bayern want to lowball it to keep him for a year. Because I think, I think, I think Spurs is only, only, only shot. And I think top four is a possibility. A possibility. Wow. If we make the right signings, if Ange works, we, but we need Kane in that team. We need a 30 goal season striker. I, I agree um, with you there. And, so, and I think, you know what, if we it's get Champions League next year and a project starts happening and we get top four. No, nah, but you're not getting Champions Then Kane can go and it'll be, it'll be a worthwhile. <laughs> it's a risk, it's a gamble. I agree. I think it'd be nice to get the first year off to, to a good start and yeah. if Kane was there for that obviously he, he's 100 million a hundred, money, you're going to lose him for free up. and he's most likely let's be real he's probably going Man U that's what I wanted then what he, I said as then well because yeah. I see Man U having a much better year this year yeah. under under 7, eight, seven ten and hard. then he breaks the record <laughs> he breaks the record in the Prem and can play for Man United I, 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 get it. I think that's the big and it's a it's a, almost a two-sided coin for Spurs you either take the money Right, which is for a 31 year old with one year left on his contract, 60 million is a 30, good shit. 29. 29. It's what? Yeah. Starting 30 in July. Okay. Yeah, just out of two years. Semantics. Got to read the reason spending so much money on a long time. Semantics. <laughs> semantics, semantics, all right? So you're going to get 60 million for someone who's got one year left on his contract, which I think is a fair enough deal. Or you let him come to us, which I yeah. would complain for, but it goes against everything that you as Spurs fans want. Yeah. You don't want yeah. Harry Kane turning up for United, smashing yeah. 35 goals yeah. in the Prem with Bruno Rashford, Mason behind him. Trust me, as an Arsenal fan that saw Robin Van Persie do that move, you do not want to see it. You don't want to see it and you feel getting 100 million. No. Well, or, well, Arsenal okay, sold let's Arsenal say 80 sold million. Let's say Bayern got to 80 million. 80 million pounds. Yeah. And 90, oh, 90 Arsenal pounds. Arsenal also sold Robin Van Persie. You got twenty million. Yeah, you, actually sold, you decided to sell. Yeah, 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 yeah. But what so, I'm saying is that if if you have the option to sell Kane yeah. for eighty million to okay. Bayern instead of it's realistically probably Man U next year for free, yeah. and then he goes to Man U and What's starts. Chelsea? Can I say one thing? There's and, and don't buy me for this, but there's, there's always <laughs> a small chance that Kane decides to sign a new contract. Not a America. chance in hell. <laughs> <laughs> if, if he Easy. Easy. Yeah. Easy. Easy. Actually, December, yeah. a little Christmas present. Nah. We, yeah, we, a little we, Christmas look, present, Harry. We start <laughs> strong. We get to January. We're in a top four battle. He's loving Andrew's style, nah. right? He's liking the project. Nah. Retweet. You know? He's been there his entire life. He's been there his entire life. You know what? I don't know. He's not getting I, hooked I in again. He is not letting his brother rope him into another six-year contract. <laughs> Charlie, as Charlie, as. Charlie, Charlie's gonna really enjoy Munich. I think we're a beautiful, beautiful city, and uh, Oktoberfest for the entire family. Let me just know. let me just say this right. If Harry Kane, and I'm gonna put this out there, if Harry Kane, in the next year, doesn't move to a top club. I'm not saying Spurs aren't oh, a top a club. Low, right? Before I that's before right. I, before I get clipped it, mate, mate. before I get clipped for that right. If he doesn't move to Bayern Munich, Man United, a Champions League, a Champions League so, so not caliber winning club, right? <laughs> I think it looks down on his actual football career. And that might just be my opinion as someone who yeah. wants to it's, win. It's things. a no trophy. Yeah, yeah it's the no trophy. He no. might have one trophy. Exactly. Like, it, it, it's it, cup, baby. Yeah. Realistic. No, but that's relevant. Uh, I think it's, it's very <laughs> difficult to look at Harry Kane and say, yeah, you've smashed Alan Shearer's record. Because we're all going to forget about that. All yeah. we're going to think is, what do you win? Oh, nothing. Oh, yeah. see you later. Facts. Yeah. So I, I think I think he needs to think what's best for him. Although Levy might be wheeling and dealing and not letting him do what's best for him, he needs to force a move. Either which way it happens, either he goes now or he comes to United next year. But either one of them is going to happen. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move on to the other buying target, Kim Min Jae. Here we go. What are we said about that, Nick? As a Me beauty, or, though. Uh, uh, Man U, so, uh, <laughs> he, he so must be I'm upset about that. about that. Uh, let me get my moment after the whole the, the rice tobacco. <laughs> no, I'm super happy with that. I think we're replacing a great player in Lucas Hernandez. I disappointed on a personal level, not knowing him, but ha him leaving Bayern. But I think we're replacing him with a almost better player. At least he's always available. I think Lucas Hernandez had two ACLs, so yeah. that's pretty rough. I, I, I love the player. I think he's great. I, I saw a stat the other day though that I think. He, on average, he missed 16 games a season for Bayern, which is That's just wow. absolutely Chris, and he's a record signing. So yeah, we we got almost 50 million for him. We're signing Kim for 50 million. He was definitely the best centre back in the, um, Serie A last season. 
so I'm excited. I think uh, I think it's cool. I think we're getting someone in who has little problems also away from football, which Alam has also had. Yeah. And yeah, I'm super excited to see him play. Good price. I think, good price. Price. I think yeah. for the release. It was 50 mil release, right? Euros, release right? Clause, uh, which is crazy. He just got a year younger due to this <laughs> absolute bargain. And yeah, I think I, I'm excited. Nice. And you're stealing from Man U, <laughs> which is always nice. Listen, I'll say this, right? And we spoke about this very briefly before. Yeah. It is absolutely ridiculous from Bayern Munich to do that. And this is speaking <laughs> objectively, right? Because that is one of the most selfish things I've ever seen in football. We complain about City picking off the best players and building a mega squad. But Bayern Munich have some of the best centre-backs in world football. We can, re we can re read them off now. Upamecano, De Ligt, Hernandez is leaving, fine, whatever. You probably have some guys in the youth squad that are going to be quality. And you now sign Kim Min Jae. So one of those three is sitting on the bench. Yeah. Greedy. And I think that is absolutely greedy and ridiculous. <laughs> Who yes. Been uh, it's super tough. Uh, it's super interesting because, so we've had two great centre-backs, I think, especially over here, Upamecano has kind of suffered under like a bit of the online trolls. Mm. He's been amazing for 98% of the season, he was the best, but he was generally absolutely amazing, inc inc including the World Cup. However, I have to say, obviously, in the big moment against Man City, and yeah. that's what it matters. It doesn't matter that I watch him be... Cologne on a weekend and he looks like the best centre back I've seen in years. If uh, against City he slips and he just stinks up the field, it's, it's the field is obviously painful. So it's going to be really interesting to see, especially as Tuchel wanted the six with Rice. Do we get a six? If not, I don't think there's many on the market. Maybe he goes three at the back and Uber Meccano a bit more aggressive where he maybe is allowed to make a mistake and you have two bullies and the Licht and Kim at the back. Yeah. Let's see if he f does that. I personally would love to see it because Uber Meccano can pass the ball far. Wait and see. Also, another thing too, maybe uh, from an angle you haven't considered, Nick. And I know this is the case for Spurs. The South Koreans, they they, they bloody love their football. Yeah. Uh, I think one in there's 48 million people in South Korea and 12 million of Spurs fans through Kim Jong Un. And not that Bayern Munich need it, but just again, that's just another thing for Bayern. You know, probably like six, seven million fans. There. He's one of their biggest players, right? Hundred percent. Just 100%, you know, 100%. don't million. don't hate it's on worth, me, Gunners. Worth the 50 million uh, every penny. I, I watched a few videos of Spurs' preseason tour on YouTube where Son arrives in South Korea. Arrives in South Korea. Yeah. Nuts. Cool. Yeah, super cool. Crazy. It's like the Beatles. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> literally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It genuinely was. It was like the Beatles. Yeah. Like, just crazy. Like, so, yeah, no. It's they're like, obviously, they're like rock stars out there. Yeah, like, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, well, yeah. it's unreal. All right, well, let's move on to Man U. We had the horny, horny bomb. <laughs> Thursday night, the 60 million Mason Mount is going to Man U. Moving from Chelsea. What are you feeling about that? One year left of the contract. Okay, what? Know, you were coming to me for one year with Declan Rice. Okay. One year left, Mason Mount from Chelsea. Okay. I, I, Talk to me. I get it, right? And I would have been happy with the 50 up front and the five add-ons. Yes, we've had to wheel and deal with Chelsea. I think he's a great signing. I think he's an upgrade on Ericsson. He's got legs. He can play. And if we're talking about people lobbing players into squads and like we did with Havertz, there's no manager that Mount hasn't played under that hasn't picked him. And yeah, I think that yeah. says something. Yeah, that's true. That shows one character, quality, whatever else it might be. Yeah. He is a fantastic footballer. Yes, he's had a dip in form and whatnot for the last year or so. Yeah. But he's a fantastic footballer and a fantastic signer. Well, on that, on that, let me, let me say like last year's stats. Yeah, of course. 35 games, three goals, six assists. Four of those assists come in the Champions League, to be fair to him. The year before that, 53 games, 13 goals, 16 assists. So he did yeah, yeah, I think have he a got. very poor year. And the previous two years, won Chelsea's player of the year. Both so, years yeah, yeah, 2020, 20, 21, 21, 22. Yeah. So, the season maybe that. Last, he got 33% of his goal contributions, not last season, the season before. Playing against Norwich, I think when when Chelsea <laughs> got 7-0, he got three goals in the six. Great stat. So Luis I mean, Suarez. Just, just just to throw that out there as well. I, I, I don't disagree with the, the fact that every manager has wanted him in there and yeah. start him. I think the fee, especially when we just talked about Madison, yeah. the fee for Great me point. is is far too high. English tax. In, yeah, English tax. I also have to. Uh, also, he's a homegrown talent too. Which yeah, is very homegrown bad, talent. I mean, but yeah, so Madison the same. Yeah, I'm not I mean, saying. Yeah, I'm saying, but that's without being biased. Before this window starts, before obviously transfers, offers have gone in, I would much rather have Madison than. than I, I think, think you get away with out. Madison being 40 mil because could Leicester got relegated. Nick, as you've got no skin in the game, could I ask you, right? Yeah. 
Can you do a shag marry avoid, <laughs> taking into account ability, contract time left, Love and this. also and also value of the transfer between Mount, Madison, and, and Rice? What, have what you like? And, have it. Have it. Have it. I was going to only because they're all English there. But context matters, fine. right? So fine. it would have been Rice I picked because we need a six. Uh, sure. I think. Ah, okay. I think it's it's tough to say. But what? Well, I j before I do that game, I want to say forty million for Madison who got relegated, no Champions League experience. Or he does actually, right? Unless there wasn't a chance, of course. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure with him, though. He probably wouldn't yeah. have played for, no, sure for them. He wouldn't have played for them then. But Mount, who's one of the most integral players of a Champions League winning side, I think it's it's, it's those 15 million extra it's, it comes from him not being relegated. You could say the and same thing about Rice, though, not being... But Mount's like, numbers last year, not Mount's. Madison's numbers, he got 10 goals, 9 assists. Yeah. But they got relegated. Yeah, no, but that's... that's, that's that's pretty nuts, and I mean, it, that's almost speaks course. better for I, him. I also think Madison's a great signing, by the way. I, I, I'm not trying to disbar that at all. I'm just saying, Mount's coming from Chelsea. They're not going to give him for a little. I think 55 million for an English player, as you guys say, English tax is 15 million more than Madison. I don't think that that's that, that's crazy. I think United have overspent much worse on other players. That's, well, that's agreed. Point. Agreed. Yeah. I think also it's Mount is a fantastic player, right? But we also have to remember. This guy is now going to go into playing with Bruno Casemiro behind him. Yeah. So forget about Chelsea had a shocker of a year last year. A shocker of a year. So we can forget about last year because none of their players did anything. Havertz who went to Arsenal, his stats weren't fantastic. No. Chelsea's top scorer. Best, probably their best player, right? Yeah. We forget about that and we look into the system they're going to be put in. He's going to play with Casemiro, Bruno, Rashford. If we get a striker, striker, hopefully he'll play with him. Those five components to our team are going to be massive yeah so I do I do not see a world where Mason Mount does not succeed in Manchester United click me yeah. again interesting May, also one more thing very interesting Mount to back Mita here and that's crazy because I'm I don't even love Mason Mount to be honest but <laughs> it, 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 should, <laughs> it should be said also that Arsenal according to your favorite player, yeah true he was the prime target before Havertz and Liverpool wanted Mason Mount I think as I said well I don't know obviously for me it's only eye test kind of going to back the scouting department here as well I think it says something about Mount that all these teams wanted yeah. him and all the managers wanted him as well but obviously I'm not a Chelsea fan so let's I'm, I'm intrigued I'm intrigued to say the least I think I'm also very intrigued about James Madison I think it's an exciting signing for Spurs and it's all, always good to get an English player in, I think yeah both those would be very interesting I think you can pick and choose whichever you want out of Mount and Madison we call them fairly similar-ish type of players creative. I think Madison excels more I can't but lie because I just think and coming, you guys have got had a, a cam for yeah. no, no, years, no. Right? He, 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 Kane Madison's, was playing he's got essentially cam he's doing, he's doing and striker. Yeah. yeah, he was. But you put Kane in the box all, all and Spurs have someone feeding him balls. Someone to finish off the chances Kane creates. But yeah, that's why we don't score that many goals. Yeah. You need two Kane. Which Alisson didn't want to score. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Besides the the on field ability, though, and it's, it doesn't always you know matter a huge amount, but. I think if you've heard Madison speak before in interviews, he's, oh, yeah. he's a really likeable guy. He's yeah. got a bit of gusto. A few Tottenham fans have been saying we've got Gaza back. Gaza just, just as zero. as as you say, likable guy. I have I have a few tweets from Madison from back in the day. If There's I, if some I, great if ones I in just there. Just read these yeah. ones out. Really so really I have. Nice. Really nice I, to there. I hate yeah. Gareth Bell with a passion. Calm down, you monkey. Wilshire is a ten times better player than you. You chimpanzee. Hope Luis Suarez destroys Tottenham today. Don't like Spurs, especially that monkey that everyone's on about. So just just right. just something it interesting. Like, but he doesn't like the Welsh. Like, right? That doesn't sound <laughs> like anything, anything to do with Spurs, right? Like if you're not careful, yeah. I'm going to go on Twitter. I'm going to get your account and see your tweets from when you were 15. Oh, <laughs> right. delete it. There'll, there'll, there'll be some scourges in there, I'm sure. <laughs> no, look, he, he obviously didn't like Tottenham. And yeah, I think a lot of mate. Arsenal fans have been bantering us. Yeah. Because they're thinking, oh yeah, Harry Kane, Arsenal fan. Well, it's the fact Wilshere gets. He's actually a United well. fan, Madison. So he's not an Arsenal fan. He just doesn't like Tottenham. Is he? You know, I thought he was like a Coventry fan. Dick, Dick and Rice is a Chelsea fan. Yeah, so I've he, seen him in a kit as a kid. Yeah, in he, Coventry. I think kit. he moved to Coventry when he went yeah. up the the tiers uh, uh, in, in the youth system. He was just a big but fan of Jack Wilshere. Like, whether he's from Manchester, I'm not too sure. But he definitely grew up as a, as a Manchester United fan. I think he, it's good Ronaldo, lad. and Beckham were his were his idols. Um, yeah. 
No, nah, fair enough. I, I, I think it will work out well. I'd also say Spurs. We're like olives, right? You don't like them when you're young, but when you get older, you, you, your taste matures. We age like a fine wine, right? And it's only really as you grow up and you sort of experience football that you really sort of appreciate what we bring to the game, right? And he's obviously, he's obviously, <laughs> look, he's more really immature in his youth, right? Okay, he's seen the ball we've been playing, he's seen the the vibes that we bring to the league, and finally got relegated. He's like, oh, what? I want a bit of that action. You guys um, just play off vibes, yeah. though. One yeah. one day you might win three 0 the next yeah. day you're getting slapped that, five 0 that's part of the fun, mate. That is part okay. of the fun. After <laughs> after yeah. Kevin De Bruyne, I think it was 46 goals and assists across the last two seasons from midfielders. Madison second with 39, I believe it was. It's 19 last season. It must have been 20 this, the, the season before, which I think is really impressive. In a it's, relegation it's side something too, that Not only is it, a, is it a good player, a good signing, it's something that we specifically need. Last summer, yeah. I was really frustrated. I thought we needed two centre-backs. We went and got Longley. <laughs> On loan, I think we're potentially purchasing him. I think it's a, a reasonable price. We don't, or more recently, we don't always go and purchase what we need, which is yeah. really frustrating. Mm-hmm. Madison is, is exactly what we need. Even with Conte last season, last 20, 25 minutes chasing a game, need a goal, he would have been the perfect person or one of the best sort of options we had to bring on. So I'm really excited. And I think the football is going to change so much. We've been banned to the last season. It was awful to watch. Yeah, we weren't complaining. The last couple of seasons has been la- horrendous. Since Pochettino, you could. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I'm actually. I'm really excited. Happy for you guys that you actually get to watch something other than. I'm really. That, it's going to be possession-based football. football. Yeah. If you look at the two seasons, Andrew was at Celtic. They had 67% and 69% yeah. possession, scoring freely. Yeah. He kind of played, from my understanding, he played like a pep kind of, out of with possession, two, three allowed the wing backs to get forward more so I, honestly it's exciting the only problem I think you have with, with the Madison signing that could be unfortunate for him is if you do end up letting Kane go and back to back relegations for him it would be <laughs> <laughs> devastating for the lad I am, really I am <laughs> quietly <laughs> pretty concerned if Kane does go what our options are and I am quite concerned well, I'm, I'm not going to get too yeah. Maybe not that concerned, so but yeah. Till it, till it happens where it can, can we, you made a point about Angie's football style at uh, Celtic and the possession stat or whatever. Mm-hmm. This might sound a bit biased and anti-Spurs or anti-Angie or whatever, whatever it might sound like. But that's the Scottish League. Celtic are expected sure. to do that, right? Yes, yeah. they have one challenger in Rangers, but yeah. Rangers had a bit of a rocky season. Rangers, Rangers were rocking it with Steven Gerrard when he came in. But then you he know, left. They, they just got to a Europa League I, final. It's true. They were looking good. They were cooking. I, that wasn't with Rangers. Uh, that wasn't with Stevie, though. The, well, the Europa. Oh, that was with the It's a valid point. Yeah, he went invincible. Sorry, it was Van Bommel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a very They were banging, mate. They were banging. He's not proved... The highest he's been in is... He's 57. The highest sort of managerial position he's been in is at Celtic. Yeah. I don't watch a huge amount of the Scottish League, but I know when he no. came in, it was a bit of a mess. I think Rangers yeah. won the league. I don't quote me on the points, but it was... Well, they'd done the Invincibles, I think. Yeah. yeah. And so he came in at a really rocky time and then won, the won the league and then won, I think it was two, two trophies last season, maybe three. Um, also, also what, 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 have, what have established winning managers done for Spurs? We've had two of the best of all time, Jose yeah. Mourinho, Conte, both come in. And to be honest with you, the only vibe I've got from both of them is that it, they, they feel like they're doing us a favour. Yeah. Like, we should be thanking them for being here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. No, I want someone who comes in, right, is grateful for the opportunity to manage a team like Tottenham, right, right who plays, and to be honest with you, like, fine, if we're going to come seventh in the league, let's come seventh in the league, but let's play football like I like to watch. Mm. Some that's been the issue. It's only, I, I mean, watching Spurs, I'd rather be, like, taking part in Chinese water torture than, watch some <laughs> of the, than watching some of the bloody games I had to watch. It was horrific. Year. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was, was it, I remember, I was, me, me and Ben watched the Liverpool game where we were 3-0 down, made it 3 all, and then lost in the last game. <laughs> like, it was exciting <laughs> in a sense. Like, it was off. exciting that we were just such, such a, I don't even know the word, like bottle jobs, it was the only thing that's <laughs> yeah. It was so, like, it was so Spursy. chaotic, man. And it's just like, you know what? Like, I just want someone, fine if we rock up one week and we lose 3-1 and we're completely out of play, but if at least we have a go. Like, it's just, the style of play is just so anti-Tottenham. Yeah. And I think Angie, I'm already calling him Angie like he's been here for years. Like, you know, Poster Coglu, if he comes in, he plays the style of football he's been playing at, at, at Celtic and then also in Japan before and Australia before that. I think I, think, I, think I really like it. He's really grown on me. When he first came in, I was like, oh, he's not going to do Jack. But actually, over, I have the time to think about it. I've also heard Celtic fans speak about him too. And they are, they've, not been, they, they, they've not been this gutted about manager leaving since Martin O'Neill left in like the early 2000s when he got them to a UEFA Cup final. So I think, I think also, yeah, I think, I think all, the, 
I think he could work. It, like, it, Pochettino, who was Pochettino uh, before he came to Spurs? No, well, yeah. that's that's why I think yeah. you've kind of gone down the Poch and the Mikel Arteta route of being an unknown exactly. kind of guy great, yeah. and, and playing some nice tester, some nice yeah. football and and passionate and they 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 have something to to prove, right? Sure. Jose and Conte didn't have anything to prove, exactly. right? yeah. and so I, I do think it will work. Let's go off Spurs and let's talk DDG. David De Gea, is he bored of your club? I, don't, <laughs> I saw that tweet of him yawning. I don't think he's bored. I think from what I've read and what the situation supposedly happened is they've agreed a contract, he's taken a pay cut, was about to sign it, and then Ten Hag's decided, no, I want you to take a, more of a pay cut because I'm not sure whether you're going to be number one. Yeah. And that's just transpired and his contract's obviously run out today. And Demazio is reporting that the relationship is now done and we are going full steam ahead with Anana. I think, although De Gea is, he's fallen off it, if we're being completely honest, in the last two, three years. He he's still a glove. Yeah, no, 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 you know? yeah that's, there's reasons behind that. But he's still a fantastic goalkeeper. Don't get me wrong. I'd be personally happy for De Gea to stay. I just want him to drop the wage. He doesn't need to be on 375. What, so what was what did you offer him that then got redacted? From what I read, we offered him 250 and then wanted to drop it even lower to 200 from 375. That's crazy. Which is a lot. Yeah, that which is, is so much money. Which is, That's a toxic workplace environment yeah, right it, there, Nifa. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. If someone tried that on me, I'd be out the door pretty yeah, quick. But I think, I think we have to put it into context. We are trying to restructure the whole way the club does things. And credit to Eric Ten Hag because he's actually the one forcing the issue in doing that, right? Mm -hmm. So we have to put that in perspective. De Gea, again, a shame that if it ends this way, it ends this way, because he's been a legend of the club, has won player of the season four or five times, great goalkeeper, but I think he probably even knows it's, it might be time to get into a fight. He hasn't had a real challenge since point. Anders Lindegaard in 2013. And Lindegaard almost won that. Exactly, and Lindegaard almost <laughs> won that. So we have to be honest with ourselves and. <laughs> Who's the other geezer you've got knocking around in goal? I can't remember. Tom Heaton. That's no. the Villa bench. Sergio Romero. Sergio Romero. Who's the, who's the, guy, the guy who was at Man United, the youngster? What was his uh, name? Dean Henderson. Dean, Dean Henderson. Henderson. Yeah. Yeah. Is he sold? He's, he's gone. He's gone to Forest, right? He, yeah. He's, yeah. It's not official, oh, but he's like not guy. spoken to Eric Ten Hag since July what, last year. What was the actual I never like. What was the actual problem with him? Like because when we announced when the talks for Ten Hag were were ongoing. Henderson just decided I'm off to Forest oh, really? before That's even nice. like waiting for Ten Hag to get signed. Sure. So Ten Hag was like, I'm not talking to you and they haven't spoken since supposedly. Oh, I well. felt quite sorry for him to be you because I think he's a great keeper, Henderson, and goes to, to uh, goes to Nottingham Forest and then Kayla Navas just yeah. rocks up. <laughs> right, but how are you doing? <laughs> but no, yeah, I, a big one. Interesting. Yeah, if you're not beating if you're not they're gonna be starting goalkeeper, obviously Kayla Navas coming with a huge pedigree. Yeah. Uh, I've seen him um, save way too many shots. <laughs> against our strikers over the years but still I think the pedigree needs to be there you need to start and my we've spoken hours and hours about this I think the hair is a, a legend I think I've always been a bit more on the negative side because yeah. for years I heard that he was as good as Manuel Neuer which I always said I massively disagreed with I think United need a new goalkeeper massively I think the way they want to play the yeah. way I kind of like Ten Hag's football or Ajax football with Onana back then that's why obviously it's yeah, a lazy link but yeah. the link seems to make a lot of yeah. sense uh, question is does Onana will he cost you points by not being able to make some some of the saves the hair does but I think he wins you a lot of games by just being much more progressive yeah. I think the Aaron Ramsdale signing everyone was sure like what is going on but Aaron Aaron does mess up like he is yeah. not the best shot stopper yeah. of Edison isn't either of the Atlantic. neither is it yeah 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 and I mean Alisson arguably arguably, arguably, is. arguably is like that guy is a beast Onana, but Anana's arguably better than he's just a he's sort yeah. of a Champions League finally yeah yeah, yeah, yeah the way he plays I think he left the World Cup Great Champions World League, Cup squad because he was so angry with the uh, the, the, yeah. the, the, the manager because he didn't want to he wanted him to play a more traditional role. Yeah. So I think I think it's cool. I think it's exciting. And yeah. Um, and I think that's ex like you touched on it. That's the way Eric Ten Hag wants to play. Yeah. As United, uh, I, I said this at the start. I love the hair. I wouldn't have a problem yeah. with the hair staying. But if I want, and as much as I trust Ten Hag, if I want to buy into it, I have to accept that the hair might not be his guy. And as sad as that is, the hair is not going to accept playing. Is it? Is it the two. priority though? 
there's a lot going on at Man United. You know, the ownership coming in. You got yeah. like Man United have a, have a decent season. You would have taken top four at the beginning of the year. But I look at Man United, and the first thing that's going to my head: oh, we need to change this. Is it's not the goalkeeper. Yeah, I, I think that is. He could. You could have given him another year. You, a club legend who's been there for twelve years. Do you know what I mean? And you're oh, like kind what, of messing around with what comes like to that. mind? Do you think what comes striker? To uh, yeah. Striker, Strikes, yeah. Really, yeah. like I don't know, maybe another centre back, Cent- maybe back potentially. Right, I, I feel say. like I don't know. Varane's been injured quite a lot. Well, we would have had one yeah. until these guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, but sure, they, sure. I, I agree. I don't think goalkeeper is the priority. I think the priority is and still continues to be striker. We wanted Kane. That's definitely not going to happen until Ossiman next. Sounds, uh, yeah, but he's, really too yeah. He's, he's too expensive. He's too expensive. De Laurentiis. Or Unless you get the Qatari money. He's, yeah. the, he's the Italian yeah. Daniel Levy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah. uh, let's see how they manage. One thing to note here, lads, is that the majority of these transfers we've been talking about have all been the Premier League. Mm-hmm. So let's talk around Europe. So, boys, is there anything big that you have seen in Europe so far? I mean, not really. There's not been too much. I know we had Ruben Loftus cheek, I think, today. What else has gone? Gundogan to Barcelona. That's big. That's pretty big, to be fair. And kudos to him for actually making that move. I mean, he's won everything, so it's not, it's not a, like a mind blower. But other than that, I'm not too sure. There's the whole Saudi Arabia thing, but. Of course. Yeah, that's I think. Famously, Saudi Arabia being in Europe. <laughs> I mean, one leaving Europe, which perhaps you'd be very surprised about two, three weeks ago, is Benzema. Obviously, it links to Saudi Arabia again. Yeah. I think that's huge. It's huge news. Um, well, I've actually got some numbers for you boys. I've, I've gone through Transfer Market, the go to the website, and put together all of the transfer spends of the top five leagues so far this transfer window. So, what I challenge you to is. Take a guess at what the Premier League current spend is. Just for this window? Just for this window. 23-24 so far. And, it's really and, and I will note that I have not included Rice, okay, okay. Timber, Paul Torres. It's anything without... If it hasn't had a here we go, it's not been included. Paul Torres got the here we go last night. Also, shout out to Aston Villa. <laughs> <laughs> Emery loves that one. This is as of Thursday night. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, t- I'll, stick my, I'll stick my flag in the sand early doors here. I want to go for a cultured 400 million. That's what I'm... 400. Oh, that seems uh, way too high. I actually. will That's also right. clarify, transfer yeah. market yeah. is in euros. In euros. In okay. euros. In so, euros. So you know, all of these numbers mind, are in euros. I'm going to go with 300 million euros. What? How... Lads, the maths are wrong. Lads, yeah. Can we have the a conversation about Camers Lee's no, no, math? Wait, for, no, firstly, four hundred to three hundred. No, yeah, no. Listen, I my, that first one I was thinking about it still. I went first, so you have to keep that in mind. <laughs> I, went, I went way too high. I'm actually bringing it back down to three hundred. That's my that's my official guess. After you boys, I'm going three hundred and fifty million euros. Three fifty million euros. I think it's about right. Three fifty million euros, Prem. Nick? Yeah. I'll go two ninety. I was gonna go 400 as well, but no rice. Yeah, I'm gonna lowball it. And I'm say, gonna lowball it. Yeah, definitely, and say 210. Wow. Okay. Well, so that I I think the reason you guys have have got this so wrong is because there's so it's 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 509.22 wow. euros. The the interesting thing that I noted from that won, the interesting thing I noted from that is that. Spurs contribute 141 million of those euros on, through 30 million for Kulisevsky, oh, 45 million for Poro, oh, 20. Oh, yeah. It's it's the no, of course, yeah. 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 So yeah. so 20 mil for Vicario and 46.3 million for Madison in euros. So Spurs massively contributes to that. But then even if you take the the 140 from from Spurs, you're you're still all quite a way off because it was 360 I think I think yeah. Cam was the closest with, I actually, yeah, with 400 right. so should've you're, you're 40 instinct. mil off should've should've my instinct. Instinct. Yeah, 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 yeah. you should have given us a tip with the, 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 the loan players also there. fair enough it's not it work I mean it's just their yeah. pain it's the end of the loan and so that's that's the same for all of them yeah. who would you say out of the other four has the biggest spend Serie A La Liga Bundesliga Liga. La Liga. Sure. it has to be La Liga, Liga with one single sign yeah yeah, yeah. Interesting. It's not La Liga. Oh wow. Syria. 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 So, it, 
it's a bit inflated. 66 million of it is, is Juventus with 30 million for Locatelli. Okay. Okay. An end of loan payment. Yeah. And, again, and, and, and Moise Keane. Yeah. Um, which was 30 million to Everton, which is quite nuts as well. But still, 66 million takes them above La Liga, which are 175.8 right now, with 103 of m- million of that being Drew Bellium. So the rest so of the teams the, in the league. The rest of La Liga is seventy-two million. But, I mean, we are still at the start of it, right? But I mean, yeah, yeah no, end, of course, of course. At the end, I mean, over the next time, it will be. And, like, and this will be an interesting thing like too. It will be continue uh, like this. I think if you put all leagues together, I think the Premier will spend more at least, yeah, or at least a similar amount as the four leagues together. But just, yeah. great. just taking more, taking yeah. taking the Premier League out of it, you look at last season. Outside the Premier League, obviously, with West Ham and Man City winning their European respective European competition, the best performer. In, in terms of a league, would have to be Serie A. Three finalists, all beaten, fair enough. But you know, I think I feel like they're the they're potentially the new up and coming league in, in Europe at the moment. I think I, I really like what they're doing. I think they've got some yeah. seriously good teams, and I think that matches what you're saying in terms of how much they've spent so far. I mean, we we have I have included in the Bundesliga figure fifty million for Kim Min Jae because it was a here we go when I calculated this. So that's that's two two five point five eight million. So not that far off, and I think there's big chances um, coming. Not far off La Liga. Um, okay. Liga uh, <laughs> is 69.75 million. That's very much the Uber Eats League. But other than that, it's, it's, it's pretty clear that the Prem, even though it's early in the window, is just absolutely annihilating. These are the European leagues. So we mentioned Saudi Arabia briefly. And so we've said we've had Gary Neville come in and say we need to ban all transfers to Saudi Arabia until we find out where the money's coming from or or who owns Chelsea or whatever. We've had Jamie Carragher say that the Bernardo Silva things are a real game changer. So is is that really that much of a threat to European football? Or is the Premier League already that threat? Are we already destroying the Spanish League? Are we destroying the German League through the amount of money that we're able to spend and they're not? No, not at all. No? Not at all. Like, look. With those numbers? The the Spanish league have been poaching the Premier League's best players for 20 years. Look at your Ronaldo's, right? Look at your Gareth Bale's, right? And then all of a sudden, the Premier League, the Premier League start doing that bit themselves. And then the presidents of Barcelona and Real Madrid, when PSG come in and start poaching, PSG keep, keep one of their own players and Real Madrid would come out and start crying to the world saying, oh, it's so unfair, so unfair. No, I'm sorry. T- football goes in cycles. Football goes in cycles. Serie A dominated in the 90s. La Liga dominated for the early, for all the money the Premier League had that started in the early 2000s. But how, many, how, many, how, many European, how many European titles did Premier League clubs win? Real Madrid won four in a row. So I'm, I'm, I get what you're saying and there's definitely a lot of money there and, and going forward it's a bit concerning. But I don't. I don't think it's. Fa- I don't think it's fair to say that the Premier League's ruining football. I mean, look how much money has the Premier League provided to teams like Porto and Benfica and stuff like that, that they can go reinvest themselves. You know what I mean? Like tri- a bit of trickle down economics going through football. Like. Mm. I think it's. I think it's interesting so. you say that just because we flirted with the idea of a Super League, right? And I think potentially the, you could argue it that there is already a Super League, yeah, 100%. and the Super League is the Premier League because we're able to spend X amount. You see Aston Villa. Yeah, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, whatever, Aston Villa are not spending <coughs> 45 million euros on a defender. Sure. No. It's not happening. But yeah. oh, what I would say to that is whose fault is it? It's yeah. no... The, the, the German league could have gone out and rebranded themselves and redone it. And look, German football and English football are completely different. You know, I, I, really, I really really, like the, the 50 plus one and, and the, the way it's based around the fans. But look, if you want to base football around the fans and you want the lower ticket prices, then you can't complain that your clubs don't go out and spend money. Like... Do you, do you kind of get what I'm saying there? There is that, it's, it's the way you set up your league and England have gone out to set, make it the world league, I guess. They've gone out and really focused on, on those global sort of TV deals, Asia, USA, and the rest of Europe. They never really sort of paid attention to that. And it was only really in the sort of 2010 time where they looked around at the Premier League like, God, these guys have really sort of done quite well here. And now it's only now where those threats are starting to get realised. So what stopped Spain from doing what the Premier League did? What stopped Germany or Italy? Germany massively. Finally, sorry, Germany. Sorry, yeah, yeah, I think. Me. I think. I, I agree. I think the Prem deserves a lot of respect, and of course, what a fantastic league! I like to watch it the most as well. Watch it every weekend since uh, since I've been here. I, I I like to cut in with Germany. If someone agrees or not with it, because I have also have my own thoughts about the entire thing. I think it's tough to put Germany in the in the same 
League as let's say Italy or even England or sure. Spain because it's completely different. I, the, the way we think, I mean, Red Bull Leipzig is, is if a, a, any English person I speak to, they say, hey, Red Bull Leipzig, what a cool team. You yeah, know, they're yeah, yeah. great investment. They didn't spend 100 million on one player. Yeah. They've just had a lot of tons of... Kind of like Brighton. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly, England. almost, yeah. Exactly, sure. and in, in Germany, they're absolutely despised. I mean, it's it's like a sh- they're despised. Like they were just, they just won the cup twi- two years in a row. And we have those scarves where you have both teams on one, oh, yeah, oh, 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 uh, oh, and they need you need the approval teams, from yeah. both teams to do it, and German teams refuse to do it with Leipzig. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're absolutely despised. Um, so I think yes, I think what stopped Germany is that they actually are very happy. If you ask the average fan in Germany, they're very happy the way they are. They they don't sure. want to sell out. They don't want to have this whole the owners situation. I think you saw with uh, Bayern Munich now that we have we, the fans are very unhappy with some sponsors and uh, actions were taken. If I believe that's the right decision or not, that doesn't matter. I would say the biggest threat to German football isn't RB Leipzig, it's probably Bayern Munich. The teams have won, they've just won 11 leagues in a row. Yeah. In terms of that, that again, I know we, I say that as a, as a, as a fan who sport, uh, sports the Premier League, Man City are, are dominating at the moment, but I feel like, look at what's happened in Italy. Juventus came off winning 10 leagues in a row, right? Then they've had AC Milan and Napoli this year and Inter been messing around too. They've had t- that competitiveness in the league has then meant that the three teams have got to ch- like European finals this year, which is, a, which is a massive feat. And I feel like that competitiveness within the league is so important. Frankfurt um, did win the Europa yeah. League last year, though, to be Of course, fair. no, yeah. Finishing no, 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 yeah. yeah. One so, thing I think that's interesting to, to point out on the, the money side of it. So the Premier League splits 50% of the TV money equally throughout the teams. The next 25% is, is based on where you finish in the league, and then another 25% based on TV rights of some kind. The Bundesliga does 25% equally split. Yeah. The, next tw- the next 50% is based on your performance in the league, mm-hmm. and then 25% based on your performance in Europe. So that's, that sets the Bundesliga up definitely more for for Bayern the likes of Dortmund and yeah. like th- this is a, a thing like I mean the, the money of the rights of the TV deals is is one of the main reasons why they say in the early years of the 2000s the Premier League actually kind of went and excelled because the other leagues didn't have that same kind of percentage know, the league have just bought something in similar it to was it. it was more yeah 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 so it was it was more equal in the Premier League in the early 2000s the, the TV rights money and so that got spread more evenly through the league and the league developed much better and more evenly because of that. You also have a lot of state nations now funding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but that's, that's so come it's... through the, but I th- the, the, the success of the Premier League, of right? The Premier League's uh, apart from league, maybe Roman and Bramwich. Roman Bramwich was the number the one of, of, of that. Yeah. But the, the Abu Dhabi not Abu Dhabi, the, the UAE ownership of, of Man City was, was a, the Prem was already pretty, pretty successful but by that I point. I mean, also, and just to bring in, huh? so bring it back to Saudi, Saudi, I completely agree with what you're saying. And I think if you bring it back to Saudi Arabia and China, why China failed, for example, right? Why Saudi Arabia, I think Saudi Arabia, they're going to bring in, they're gonna, I think that Saudi Arabia just don't have a China. Right, okay. I there's agree, reason, but the they're not going to they're not going to wage cap themselves. Yeah, of course they're not. Of course they're not. And I think there's a reason why Saudi Arabia have just bought Newcastle because these these I think the reason why the Premier League will never be that we might be the second or third league, the biggest league in the world, but we'll never drop down. A, t- a country like China or Saudi Arabia will never take that place. Is because you'd have the history of the clubs. These clubs that we're looking at, these clubs, Tottenham, Arsenal, Chelsea, Man United, they've been around for 100, 120, 130, in some cases 150 years. With all due respect, who are who are Shang, Gangzhou, Shanghai, or I who are Al Hitahao? Fine, they've they've got Cristiano Ronaldo, but where's where where are those derbies that have been played 200 times that make you get up and watch and that you think about the week before? Can name me a derby in Saudi Arabia. Name me a derby. Well, in I think that's why the Saudis. And, and so, like, don't I think that's why they've gone into Newcastle because they yeah. respect that. Look, listen, if we want to if we want to do this in football, we've got to do it in a vehicle through Europe. Through Europe, and I think that's where the, the history counts for so much. Yeah. Right? I don't necessarily agree with the standpoint that it's the same. It's just going to be another China. They've got yeah, a vision set out, the 2030 vision, yeah. Yeah. and their initial plans are, from what I've read, and it's obviously quite a topical thing, it's only popped up the last few weeks, but their initial idea is to get three, four, or two, three elite players for the top four teams that have basically got a, a silly amount to spend, and the next four teams 
have got not the same but similar sort of injection. It's the FI PI PIF. That's yeah. it, thank you. Who own like eighty percent of Newcastle mm. and then have a have a little bit of flirting going on with Chelsea. With Chelsea well, yeah, it's, it's an interesting one. Yeah, to see what's going on with quite supposedly sixty percent, but the out of favour Chelsea players and quite a few of them are Muslim which is obviously quite appealing for them with, with the, the money, but also kind of the, the culture as well. Yeah. But I think there's more of a vision with Saudi Arabia. If you look at the World Cup, for example, I think they brought the most fans out of any nation, yeah. 70,000 fans. Yeah, sure. It's the most loved sport wow. in, in the country. So I think it's slightly different there. With China, the, one of the main yeah. reasons why it went to, to pop is the um, restrictions that the players had and, and yeah. how they were getting taxed. Um, it was the wages as well, man. Like they, 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 they salary capped it at yeah, some point as well. Start paying the wages either. I mean, uh, sort of to make it political here, boys. But uh, I don't know, in, 20, in 2012, in 2012, <laughs> Easy. David, Easy. Cameron, David Cameron showed Xi Jinping round a pub, and then introduced. Uh, there was a selfie with him, the president of China, Xi, and Aguero. Right, so G's come out and he, came, he said, look, I've got the 2050 vision for China. I want us to win. A, I want us to host a World Cup by 2050. Yeah. I want us to win a World Cup by 2100. Right. And that was only like five years ago. Then they had the whole thing with the league where it all blew up. And I'm saying, like, I get where it's coming from. And money, obviously money talks in Saudi Arabia. They're not just doing it with football. Right? Yeah. They're doing, yeah. They're doing, they're, their fingers are in so many yeah. ties right now, well, which makes me think there's a little bit more longevity to it. But yeah. again, do you know what I mean? I, I feel what would be if I'm Saudi Arabia right now, I'm looking to UEFA and saying, can 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 we be admitted to UEFA? Like, yeah, like, but I that's like that's that. the like thing that, that I think that would change the game. I think that could happen. I, honestly, do you think that could happen? That would change. I think the that's game. what kind of is the downfall to because the, the, the Saudi Arabian who plan who of, of against. Do you know of, what I mean? They're not of, competing of against creating, the world's best. Yeah, regularly. yeah, yeah. But right? but are they really taking the world's best? Are they, like these what? players that they've taken, right? Okay, winner. of course the Ballon d'Or winner, but you you've got to say Benz is probably nearer the end of his career than his. Yeah, of course. Right, you. The only one that I think has caused a few issues is is really Bernardo Silva. That's what I was saying. But then well. Bernardo Silva's just come off a treble with City. He's and he's, he's won well. he's won everything he needs to win, and. For me, I think most Euro right? most players in Europe want to stay in Europe and win the trophies with these big teams. And then if you win those trophies, then great. Saudi Arabia is, is a great option to go to. MLS is a great option to go to. Like, these are lovely retirement options. Uh, but when you've won what you need to win, but I don't think they ever... A real chance. ...will compare to... I, th I think it's interesting though because we're saying Bernardo Silva was the was the only one, right? I think Ruben Neves is somewhat going under the radar. Ruben yeah. Neves was someone who was touted to go to Barcelona last year and this year, yeah. and has just signed for forty-seven million too. Yeah. I get Ruben Neves has done some questionable things in his footballing career, yes, but more players like that are going to start going that way if they see the opportunity to earn cool. big money. But I also think that's Saudi Arabia. Wolves are in a bit of financial trouble at the moment. Yes. They've, they've been told they have to sell yeah. to buy. And who's paying more? Barcelona, who've like literally just remortgaged their house so they can go have a go at the casino. <laughs> right? Or Saudi Arabia, who have just got money money come out of their ears. So yeah. I feel like, I, get, I do get what you're quite, I, I Look, I get, I, I, I can see. And also the thing is too, is do you not want a threat? Like, of surely course. for the good of football, you want a powerhouse African nation who's attracting loads of good players, or of you want Brazil oh, and Argentina signing good players. It'd be players. nice if like, the Champions League was, like, was I think it's yeah. worldwide, worldwide I, man. Yeah. Like, how crazy is it when Morocco got to a semi final? Yeah, 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 yeah. I want a team from yeah. Asia getting to a World Cup final or a World Cup semi final. I want, I, want for, I want as many threats, you know, like that's what excites me about it. Yeah. Imagine if USA had yeah. a sick team. World Cup, yeah. like, threats of the World Cup, threats with clubs, you know, whatever, whatever it may be. It's not the national team, is it? Yeah, but like national teams. The German the, over national, there. National, national teams, national teams are developed by their leagues being strong, right? Like, yeah. You don't have a, you don't really have a strong national. I mean, maybe Brazil, but it's like the fiftieth best. Argentina, just one of them. Yeah. It's fun. Very okay. questionable. I think it's, I think it's important to note that, yes, we're all, we all want football to be great and everyone to, to, every nation to be a part of it, but these conversations are almost what stops certain nations from doing because everyone's oh. That oh I'm hearing <laughs> from our technician <laughs> over there that we've got some breaking news. What's oh, going wow, on, mate? God. We've actually, Harry Kane, Harry Kane. we've actually had. Oh, yeah. It is not Harry Kane has joined oh, Bayern. I you. can confirm that. 
We have had a here we go from Fabrizio during the show oh. of Shaboshale. Oh. Who? To Liverpool. <laughs> Easy. And we happen to have a Liverpool fan in the room supporting the boys today. So we want to bring him in on the show. Let's bring him in. HFC, get in here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, Aaron. Come on, Aaron. Come on in. Harry, get in the middle there. Get in the middle. Get in the middle with the mic, mate. Get in the middle. Some good news. Why have you been hiding, mate? Very good news, eh? Yeah, talk to me, Freddie. How are you feeling? Thanks for supporting the boys today, by the way. Not at all, man. We've enjoyed you in the audience. It's good to be here, as always. Thank you very much. I've opened a few gates. I've closed a few gates. I'm ready to play now. How are you feeling about Shaboshalai? I'm I'm excited, personally. I think we needed Say his name first. Shaboshalai. Dominic to his mates. Uh, <laughs> I'm excited. I think that we've something we've been lacking over the last few years since the departure of Philippe Coutinho, yeah. who, by the way, is I struggle to I struggle to think of many players in red that I've actually preferred to watch over over these last sort of 15 years that I've been totally invested in the club. But we need that. We've been lacking that midfield. We've had since then our midfield's been very rigid, solid, Endo, Fabinho, we've got Milner in there, Thiago's a bit more creative, but he's still a bit more of a, he's not exactly a 10 or an eight. He's still, despite the tech, he's still a bit of a six. Mm. Big six vibes. A bit of a six. Whereas now I'm, I'm excited by the prospect of someone like Shaboshalai to come in and unlock a, a nil-nil game in, the, in, in Coutinho fashion, to unlock a nil-nil game and score a last minute banger or make a pass, something that needs to happen. We've been lacking that recently. And I think not only Shaboshalai can do that, but also my guy Alexis McAllister, who not only does he look like Messi, but he's trusted by Messi. <laughs> and if he's trusted by Messi, he's trusted by me. Uh, but yeah. I feel like that's a similar profile of player, no? McAllister and yeah. Shaboshalai. And do you not need like a... Jordan Henderson is probably fair to say is a little bit past the peak now. So... Do you not need a bit of a powerhouse in your midfield? I think that Henderson is going to adopt the Milner role that has been uh-huh. that role for the last couple of seasons. Yeah. And, and don't get me wrong, that's a valuable role, especially behind the scenes. I, I agree. I, I, I can see where you're going with that. But I also think that we've got Thiago now. We've got Fabinho. Part of the reason we struggled last season was that Fabinho had a bad season. Fabinho and Mr. Reliable in the last couple of seasons previously. And nowadays in, in modern day football, you see how important it is for the team if the six is playing well. Mm. Arsenal so reliant on party. If party's playing well, Arsenal play well. City always play well because Rodri always plays well. It's such a key feature of the game now. Yeah. So if Fabinho, known as the Dyson, by the way, in amongst the Liverpool dressing room, because he's hoovering up the rubbish, <laughs> he, if he can continue, I think the Hoover got a little bit, he needed to empty the, empty the sack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's now been emptied, we've bag. reloaded it, and he's ready to go again. <laughs> okay. So I'm looking forward to it. And I think yeah. that we've added a different dimension in our midfield with a slightly more attacking style there. And again, let's not forget Trent, might be now thrown into the mixture. So it's an yeah. exciting combination. But then do you have any kind of backup to Fabinho? Like, I mean, if you lose Fabinho to injury, which is very possible at some point, do you have anyone? Right now. Really? Apart, I mean, Hendo, think. but I think they got, they got a little bit. They got, what's that kid's name? Connor Bradley from Bolton, who was on loan at Bolton, did pretty well. So well, I think they got a bit of, bit of talent that can come in there and do a job. I mean, we're talking Fabinho. Yeah, but you, yeah, you, you mean, have to yeah, have yeah, these yeah. transition periods yeah, and the yeah, kids have course, to learn. Yeah, yeah, fair. I'd, li- I'd like to also uh, give a shout out to my guy Badgetic yes, as well, uh, who's okay. actually a massive yeah, yeah, baller, yeah, 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 yeah. young baller. You fun, fun fact Very of the day good. as well, his dad and Thiago's dad played together at Celta Vigo back in the day. Oh, and here they are now. I think there must be about 13 years between the two of them, something, or something like that. And uh, here they are now balling out in red. And uh, it's good to see. I think he's a promising situation in the midfield there. Young baller. I don't think he's even 19 yet. So we'll see how that pans out. I agree. If Fabinho gets, say, Fabinho does his ACL six months, we're probably looking at Hendo in that six role. Yeah. Not looking great. That's not ideal. But I also, mate, I can't knock Hendo. Yeah, You know, Hendo... 
Uh, we've got so much time for Hendo. The amount that he offers on the pitch, even if he's having a shit game, he verbally offers something that is so crucial in the game. We all know, I don't know about you guys, but when, when we're playing football and you're young and stuff, there's obviously certain things, certain tells that show you who's a level above the others. One of those things is communication. And Hendo's got that to an absolute T. Yeah, so yeah. I feel like he's definitely he's got leader. something. He's a leader for sure. hundred percent. He's not who he was. He's not the same player he was four or five seasons ago, yeah. but... Yeah, can do a job. hundred percent. And I think it's also important. You need, Harry touched on it. You need those guys in the dressing room. Yeah. Like, I think we touched on it about Arsenal bottling it last year. Say that again. Relax. Arsenal bottled it. You need those experienced players who are going to put people in check and kind of act a certain way so people understand what it is to actually go out there and win stuff. We, we give Hendo a bit of stick for not being the best we've ever seen or anything like that. But he's won the Champions League. He's won the Premier League. Yeah. He's won a lot of stuff. <laughs> and these leadership qualities are there even before that. So I'd, I'd also like to add to that. I'd also like to, not only that, I'd like to reiterate that at one point, Henderson was going to get sold to Fulham. I think around 2013, he was basically on his way. But he specifically said to Brendan Rodgers, who was the manager at the time, that he wants to stay. He wants to fight for that top spot. And as you just said, he won the champs. He won the Prem. But not only that, he lifted those trophies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, that was actually Matt. Because you, know. you signed him for 30, 40 mil back in the day from Sunderland. I think it was less And he was, he, I think it was like 30 million at the time. Because it was yeah, a big, it was I, a big I fee say it was for 18 mil. Fact check, could, fact check. 18? I think it was 18, 18? mil. 18? Okay. Be maybe, maybe I'm That's wildly wrong there. But I feel like I remember the Henderson yeah. fee being... Yeah, technician, get on it. But the, the, I, I remember it being like a high fee for that time and Henderson really not living up to the, he, he, for, they, for a few Andy years the and time. then him just Quite hitting a, yeah, like, like we, the Welsh pillar. They, we, yeah. we basically signed Henderson, Carroll, Suarez, all in the Kenny Dalglish uh, phase, which was a, not a great phase. <laughs> but Hen Henderson struggled to me. It's a difficult club to, club to come and play for. Anfield is a, it's a difficult atmosphere. It's all going on. Also, just on a little side note as well, I'd like anyone who's ever questioned Henderson's tech here, go on YouTube, Soccer AM Skill School, Sunderland, Henderson, he's got it, mate. Uh, I have some devastating news, boys. It's, fif it's 15 million. No. Oh, wow. 15 million. So I doubled it. I doubled it in my head. But <laughs> Back then it was a decent yeah. amount. Back then it was a lot. <laughs> if Henderson was to go these days. Inflation. Like, you, you were speaking with inflation. Inflation. Yeah, inflation. Yeah. Cost of living prices are that. Euros. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 18, they're saying. 18. Yeah, money, inflation and. Oh, hey, well, that's Euros. Okay, fine. <laughs> All right. Well, Harry, I know you're also a cricket fan, mate. I am indeed, yeah. <laughs> I don't like cricket, mate. Like, like, no, like 10 CC once said, I don't like cricket. I love, I love it. it. Oh, there we go, mate. Beautiful. Man. Absolutely beautiful from yeah, you, man. Man. What have you thought of the first test? Start of the second test. Difficult watch. I Very. The issue it's is, happy. when we're playing against Australia right now, I mean, what? It, 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 it very much feels like we're, we're fighting a losing battle. A lot yeah. of the time. But the first test didn't matter. Like we the felt like it felt like we were on top for ninety percent of it. And then you have the declaration early. And then when we when we're bowling at them, you have Root that gets the carry caught and bowled. Mm -hmm. And then you bowl him the next over and he gets hit for fourteen when they need fifty one left with Pat Cummins, Nathan Lyon. Don't left. take the new ball. Two don't take the new ball. Two wickets to go, Pat Cummings, Nathan Lyon, and you you bowl Root another over when they need 51. They hit 14 off that next over after he's got the wicket. And then it's down to, what, 37 between Pat Cummings and Nathan Lyon. And it's just like, there was a lot of... And then Ben Stokes drops, drops Nathan Lyon as well. Oh, so, I mean, crazy. there was just a lot of moments there that, like, England win that game if you don't bowl Root the second over. You don't declare with two wickets left and you get an extra 20, 30 runs. Yeah. And you even though it was, a, it was an unbelievably hard catch, but if Stokes takes that catch. There's a lot of ifs. Know yeah, yeah, no, no, but, there, no, but there's, there's a lot of moments there that, and there was so many swings during the whole five uh, days. It was, it was an, um, honestly, it's the best test cricket I've ever watched in my life. It is, um, honestly, I know there's a few here that aren't test cricket fans. Camus <laughs> Lee, you're a test cricket fan. This is the best stuff I've watched in my life. It's constantly swinging. If you look away, something's happened. It's unreal. These last, three days of this, this, this last test, I mean, this dating, <laughs> third day didn't go so well, but 
the the first two that, days were unreal as well. But that's the beauty of the, this series so far, I think. And I know it's not gone England's way. I really think England's biggest problem in this in this series so far is that they they've got this new star. They've got Basball. And yeah, it's great. Hit the ball as hard as you can. And if teams are going to allow you to do that, then do yeah. it. But Australia, they're, they're the best team in the world. They won the yeah. World Test Championship the other day, right? They've realised if we put people on the boundary right, yeah. and they hit the ball hard and they get one mistake, then we can catch them out. And so, bowl it short. And but then we just, yeah. but then we just fall into their trap. We're just literally, they're do, we're doing exactly what they bloody want us to do. And it's just fun. I love this exciting style of play. But yeah. I also like winning. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I don't mind. I don't mind if we don't have to hit a six every other ball. That's fine. But let's try and it win was, the it game. Was, it was it was yesterday that England were steamrolling them in terms of the, the England first innings after they got, yeah. what, 4-1-6 or whatever. 188 for one. Yeah, and, and then they, literally at that point, around the 181, 181 for one point, Australia's guy, okay, we'll put like, men deep there, men deep there, and we'll just bowl short of Ben Duckett. Yeah. We'll bowl, and it was nuts. And at that point, and if they, we just play sensibly for the rest of the yeah. day, get in at 230 for one, yeah. then we're all over them, mate. To be fair, it was very tough because they kept doing it. And yeah. like, the England players were just taking the ones. Yeah. But then Ben Duckett hits it like on his 98, man. It hits it straight to. Oh, it's cruel, isn't it? What was it? Ball fine ball. leg? Yeah, David Warner at fine leg. It was, yeah, yeah it was, it was very cool. Um, I've got a what question for our, our cricket fans out here. Yeah. Now, I've had a theory for a while. I personally haven't sat down for five, six hours and watched cricket, a, a test match, but I value my time a bit more. <laughs> but. Good Boo. Cricket fans. Boo. <laughs> When you hear someone's gone to watch the cricket, five or six hour job. It's a good day, right? mate. Yeah, good day out. Yeah, had a good few day. pints, sun was lovely. Do you know that a pub garden exists? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, you don't like, have to go to Lord's. Watch <laughs> cricket. Don't get the vibes, you, mate. Mate. Like, you can have a few pints and it's nice weather. It's the Pims garden. does cost like 10 quid or whatever and a beer yeah, costs yeah, like... Let me, take, let me take this one, Ben. Yeah, you you take most... Like Nife, I, I don't know about you, but when you walk into a church, right, you yeah. see a man being crucified on a cross, right? Mm -hmm. for, for people like me, Fred and Harry, we see a man signaling a wide, right? <laughs> okay, that's where we are in terms of how we feel about cricket, right? It's, it's, not, it's not just a sport, Ben. It, for me, it's, it's turned into a religion. It's a right? lifestyle. It's, it's, it's a lifestyle. It's the storylines. It's, it's the best, it's the hardest team sport in the world, right? You're out there, it's a 40 hour game. Name me another, football's over in 90 minutes, right? You make a mistake, then you played another game three days later. In this test, in test match cricket, it's, 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 it, I don't know. I, I actually, I struggle to find the words to describe to you, like how sort of exciting and invigorating it, is, it, it really is. It's the a swings of match. the game. It's when you're watching the days go, it, it swings one way or the other throughout it. So it's one team's dominating and then a wicket happens and then another wicket comes and then it's, it, it completely changes the complexion of the game. It is like that, and it's you've just got to watch and it to, to love it. But you, it is, a, it a, is, a tight, it is a tight entertaining. Finish, a tight finish in a football game, and you think about the drama that's taken place over the last ninety minutes. Right? Imagine you've watched a game for five days in a row, and it comes down to the final six balls. Right? <laughs> you could win the game, you could tie the game, you could lose the yeah. game. You've been, you've invested you five draw, days of your time. You you've drawn the game yeah. too. There's four results. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's just, I just, I just don't think there's a game that. Fine, I get it. It and it, it, it it's coming out to cricket. It's actually come to a little bit of criticism over the past week with the ETB and stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. a bit old fashioned. Crazy. I, I do Awful. get that, but I yeah. think at its best, right? Yeah. And the Ashes is at its best. That's where, the, even though the Australia are all over us at the moment, you've got two teams who are pretty evenly match and really I think, even. I, look, we've got two games left I don't put even if Australia mm, post 450 yeah. 480 England, England it wouldn't surprise me if they would go after yeah. them and win the game 100% you know? man like it is it, these teams are super equally matched like every game see, it's I, annoying that that first test I, thing going I don't because so I, I don't completely agree that we're actually that evenly matched. I, I think that Australia are quite considerably better than us. I don't know, man. I can't help but feel like I, I'd also also in, just in terms of go back to that. Sorry, find me a sport where one fixture lasts six weeks. Yeah, this Ashes this Ashes it's journey a it's a war. is a, is a whole summer. It's more yeah. than just ninety minutes. 80 minutes rugby, 12 rounds. It's more than that. It's six weeks, mate. It's six yeah. weeks of blood, sweat, and tears. Ooh. These things, it, it's, it's relentless. <laughs> yeah, it's a completely different ball game, but I, I'd also like to, in t just to slightly quickly go back to what we were saying about how, how it's looking for England. I think one of our biggest issues in the first test, and it's not looking good for the second test either. Yeah. First test, Steve Smith, and Labuschagne, neither of them got runs. No runs. For us to not win a test yeah. 
in a game where neither, neither of them of get yeah, runs yeah, yeah. is unacceptable. Yeah. It, 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 it shows and that, that's what, there was you know, so many opportunities to that. win that game. Like, yeah. it, and it should have. England should have won that game. And it's just annoying that it didn't happen because 1-0 up, they go 1-1 and then it's series on. But if they go 2-0 up, it's, it's a bit it's of a like disaster. The, it's over. It's, it's over, really, yeah. really, realistically. Which is just awful. Well, because there's probably going to be one that's rained off at some point or whatever. Yeah, but, sure. okay. We'll save Nick, Nife, and Ben <laughs> the pain yeah. of listening to any Thank you more very cricket much. chat. Yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> we want to talk Wimbledon? <laughs> yeah, let's go. Let's, go. let's talk tennis. Talk tennis once. Certainly not a. Part of Monday. Hitting winners, are we? So yeah. I mean, we've we've got Wimbledon. It's two weeks pure tennis. I personally absolutely love Wimbledon. It's on throughout the day. It's, the day. it's lovely to whack on yeah. on the TV and just. It's good to see. Hey, the it's whole a bit of the like UK the World Cup. Yeah. Out to the, the public tennis courts as well. Everyone gets the racket out. Honestly, yeah. I've done it so many times when I see Wimbledon. They go to the tennis courts and, and try and get good at it, classics. and then never go back to it two weeks later. But yeah, it's, <laughs> it's an interesting tournament. I mean, Djokovic is gonna win. Yeah. No. Twenty fourth Grand Slam. He hey, the the uh, no. is that his twenty fourth Grand yeah, Slam? So no. I think he just got his twenty third earlier this month. Yeah. So he levels Serena Williams, and this next potential Grand Slam would would make him twenty fourth. Twenty fourth. No, he definitely, got, he definitely has the most. De- I'm not yeah. sure with Serena. He definitely what, has the worst. He'd, he'd over. Yeah. He'd, yeah. No, he'd yeah. overtake yeah. Serena yeah. if he yeah. wins yeah. this yeah. Wimbledon. Yeah. What about Shelly? No, not anymore. No, no. Serena has more than Shelly Gard. I think, someone 22 Nadal, I think in modern Nadal. tennis, yeah, really. he would be the record holder for Grand Slam. Unless you just happen. He definitely is. Yeah, yeah. 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 Definitely when you include the women as well, then he's obviously level with Serena at the moment. But, uh, but yeah, look, I'm not a, a, a tennis fanatic by any means, but I think everyone, when it comes to Wimbledon, us British in general, we, we love it. It also signifies the usually two weeks of good weather we get as well. <laughs> Obviously, we've had a, a very good June, yeah, but so. it's kind of like, oh, strawberries and cream, go on then. Corona or two, go on. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Time, it's it's got to be done, yeah. Pims. I think it opens done. up the question, though, on the tennis topic, right? So we've obviously just said if Djokovic wins this one, he's got the most Grand Slams. Does that make him the greatest tennis player ever? It, I think that this is an interesting one. Yeah, I mean, by, by numbers, yeah, for He's sure. Evolved. The most likeable, not not, not so much. But it, don't go near him with a with a vaccine. <laughs> you you, you <laughs> asking that question though brings out the phrase. You know, how they say in boxing styles make fights. I think mm-hmm. t- in tennis, I think it's all about styles too. So, like, you look at Nadal, the energy he brings to a game, the way he can move around a court. Federer, he, he was he was like a gazelle. The class, the way mate. He just kind of like class. elegance. Class. Good stuff. But then you look you at Djokovic, and that pace. I see. I think Nadal. I think Djokovic. I, I see Arnold Schwarzenegger. This guy's a terminator. But he'll find a weakness, he'll hone in on it, and he'll yeah, make you pay. You know, he even took a year out of the game because he didn't want to take a vaccine, came back and then broke the record anyway. He's probably gonna get the Canada Grand Slam. So I don't know. For me personally, it's Federer. That's the person that I would I would always enjoy I watching. Agree. Um but you've got you've got a twenty four Grand Slam. I think it, 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 and also would you I don't know too, just to kind of change it quickly, but do you feel like if if only Djokovic played in this era? Do Federer and Nadal also get 22? Do you feel like they've pushed each other to this level? If they weren't, if they if they were all in different areas, do so they maybe stick at 16, 17? But because they've all been around at the same time, oh, pushing yeah. each other, do you, do you think that's what's happened to it? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it was like Pete Sampras before. If you look how many he had, yeah, like it's like these guys They're just nutty. dominated the big tennis. three. I mean, I grew up with. I remember. I, can't, like, I don't know. Like when I was six, almost 20 years ago. Or something. Federer was already yeah. a guy. Yeah. And yeah, Nadal yeah, yeah. It was like Federer and Nadal and it was like Babalat or Wilson yeah. or whatever. True. Andy Roddick, mate. Andy, Andy, yeah. just gonna Andy, say Andy Roddick. Andy Roddick. Andy, 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 Roddick. Roddick. Oh, Andy <laughs> Roddick with the monster soul. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was that was So yeah. are we are we ever gonna have an era like this in tennis again? Because people are saying at the moment in football we're never gonna have a we're never gonna have two goats like we've had Ronaldo and Messi. Oh, or is it no, are we no, just no. are we very much like beasts of now? We just think, oh this is the best we'll ever have it. And it won't be better in the future. It wasn't there's as good in the past. There's, 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 the there's a quote yeah. from Carlos Alcaraz, who's currently number one going into Wimbledon. <laughs> and I can't repeat the quote, but he says that the comparisons to the big three are just stupid. Because they're, they're, so they're just so clear. Yeah, they're yeah. so good. And it's a bit like Ronaldo Messi. I mean, it's unfortunate for the British guys that, that Andy Murray was in that era as well, mm. because he was also class. I mean, he's, he's won two lawn tennis tournaments coming up to Wimbledon so I mean he's worth a 28 to 1 odds 28 to 1 odds what's what's cool I think is um, I think it's kind of cool how like uh, Federer Djokovic and Nadal and then obviously Ronaldo and Messi as well they're all sort of the the goats is between each other yeah and they're all so different 
Mm -hmm. they all play the same game and they do it so differently and yet they're still very much they're, they're on they're on the same level in a way that no one else is which is kind of cool but I think it also when you were saying about who's the best it's like in football I think it depends on who you want to watch what you want to yeah. see you know me I, I want to see Ronaldinho playing like he's on the beach I want to see Neymar making grown men look like idiots Federer makes tennis look so cool Djokovic doesn't make it look as cool but he he gets the job done in the most efficient way you've ever seen anyone do it and that's it just depends on what you appreciate what you're looking for yeah but it's cool how they they're all bringing that they do it they're bringing their game and it, as different as it is it's it's equally as like sick yeah it's it's, it's gonna have any of you watched that that break point like yeah i've watched on, it on netflix very good. Yeah. Very, it, very on the good. women's side on Jabur, mate as that's that's who I'm supporting. Kyrios as well, mate. That guy's got. Yeah, some I mean, he's like, got what, some what's, a, what's a Kyrios night looking like? <laughs> night out with Kyrios. Kyrios. Loose. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely this guy loose. Reached. Absolutely a final last loose. year. He's never reaching that again. <laughs> no, realistically, mate. this guy but, is going big at Wimbledon this year. He's he's going out. <laughs> he's going out. out. I I don't really know if tennis. Amazing. I don't know. Or maybe I'm look. Tennis isn't my number one sport by any means. But I feel like I feel like. Tennis needs a killer goss. You need that personality. You need yeah, that 100%. evil. You He's need that, you need that evil character, don't you? Someone that, someone that I personally I wanted kill goss to win last year, but I know all the tennis traditionalists wanted wanted him to lose that final, right? And I feel like you need those. You need those bad guys. You need those villains in sport because yeah. that's where that's where we get the emotion. From. So you need, yeah. I, I, and it's such a shame that he doesn't play more tournaments because I feel like that. So I, I literally watched. I, I watched a few. I, watched, I used to watch Andy Murray, but I watched every single one of Kyrgios' game last year because he's yeah? such a character and the way he plays tennis too. It's just such an exciting. I can't game. like I that. Like doesn't, you, it doesn't surprise me that much, Cameron. Yeah. Look, listen. I, look, I, love a, I love an yeah. underdog. I love an underdog. What can I say? But um, you, you know how little he actually trains as well. Yeah. He, he actually prefers to just play yeah. basketball. Yeah. I mean, mate, I, I've got loads of time for the sort of player. You, you're sort of. He, he, he's got. He, he reminds me of a bit of an Adel Tarat, so the sort of player who's got <laughs> bags of ability, <laughs> who knows that they've That's got bags of ability. That's a wonderful comparison. So, so they actually. It's almost. They're almost. They almost. <laughs> weaken, yeah. They almost weaken themselves yeah. by not trying. But they know that they can afford to because they're actually technically better than anyone else on the pitch yeah. or the court. And I've got loads of time for that, despite it being frustrating. Yeah, no, I agree. Any love for uh, Andy Murray at all? 40 to 1 going into it. 40 to 1? 40 to one. No love. What, no what, love. what book is no. you looking at, mate? Sky Bet 28 to 1. I had a little look beforehand. So it, it looks to me like a bit of a, a two horse race. Where so are you getting 40 to 1 from? Which? 365. Oh, Djokovic was 47, so 1.57. And That's Carlos so Alcaraz was just under four to one. So Carlos is an interesting That's one. He just won Queens. Carlos did just win Queens, yeah. which is the big tournament in the build up to, to Wimbledon yeah. on, on grass. So I have to say I watched Carlos live last year at the US Open in the semis and it was mind blowing. I think I, 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 how old is he? I, that was about 20, 20 like, I, think, I, think, I think. I think he's, he's 20 a, now. Maybe a bit older than 20. I was, I was going to say 22 or 23, but I have no idea. That's what I was going to say. Shoot me. Don't shoot me. Fact check, um, please. Please, uh, happy to do the fact check. He's, he's definitely crazy young, and it was mind-blowing how good he was. I mean, the, the pressure was on him because he was playing against against an American. First time, I think, since... Was this tier four? ...at the USFL. Yeah. yeah. And he just... It was a five-set match, so it went all the way, and he was... But you you were watching the game even though it went five sets and you just knew he was going to win that it was so impressive like it was uh, by the way it was a lot of fun watching live it's a great time first time I ever did I'd love to watch it and it, it was so cool I mean the, obviously the Americans know how to market and how to entertain at these kind of events as well but uh, I have to say it was a lot a lot of fun and he was mind blowing I uh, a lot of respect he'll, he'll be excited yeah. when we're on this how old is he? For sure. 20 He's, wow. I so can he's confirm 19. he is 20 so 19 so last year been 19 then yeah. that's my but I think I think this even brings us to a wider topic not even just tennis or anything it's sport in general there's a general trend now that people 19 20 21 22 are just mind-blowingly good we talk yeah. Alcaraz Musiala, now, Musiala, Musiala Haaland, Mbappe. Saka. We talk Wemba Nyamba in basketball. Trent. Yeah, yeah. People like that. And it's just, it's almost, what are they feeding these kids? I think like, it's just the, 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 the growth of all those sports and the money in it. That yeah. It's just like they commit their lives to that as more of a... People it's, starting it's, from it's, an early age. People, yeah, taking people it getting, more seriously. Serious professional investment. Like genuine option. Six, option seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's That's the right. development of the game. Also as well, I don't think, if you, look at, if you look at teams now, say for example, you look at an under-18s team now. Never has an under-18s team for any team 
been in such amazing physical condition, yeah. Yeah. been so conditioned for everything, so prepared, so much training, so many hours committed, but so much more serious than it was before. We were talking, I was talking to someone the other day about the, the scrutiny that Grealish has, 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 has received from some people for living the good life, having won the treble, which is understandable. People saying, oh, he, the last English player who was like the clown of the class, the class clown was Gaza. Yeah. And how did that end? And I think yeah. it's a bit harsh, yeah. but the, the game was so different then. Yeah, yeah. It's a different, it complete, nowadays I feel like, and what you said about what we thought about Messi and Ronaldo being the best, I think I wouldn't be surprised if in 30, 40 years time we see people threatening those numbers 100%, just because 100%. the game develop is always developing it's do you not already sense. have mbappe threatening those numbers i mean if you look no? at the, look at you the don't goal, have mbappe mate, threatening those goal, numbers look at the goal scored for by mbappe and Haaland at their age now yeah. compared to messi but, uh, and ronaldo yeah, at the yeah, same yeah. age right, it's like it's hundreds clear well but then you had messi who'd won He'd won the Ballon d'Or twice by the age of 24, times, of course. 24, and that's Mbappé, and he's still knocking about. Yeah. He's going to go now. But you could have... He yeah. scored a hat-trick in the World Cup final. First, Mbappé took a Mbappé very important, important player. Couple, couple, couple Mbappé moves. stats here. Mbappé, first person to... First teenager to score in a World Cup final since Pelé in 1958. And then the first player to score a hat-trick in the World Cup final since Jeff Hurst. Wow. So that's wow. two big statements from a yeah. man who's not even 25 yet. Yeah. And of course, at the time, he was 18 and then 22. Yeah. I think you know, also, he's got a lot itself. ahead of him, yeah. yeah. I think we also have to, and correct me if you guys don't agree with this, but do we not think the quality of player, apart from the top, the top lot, so the Mbappes and Hans of the world, back in the day, so we're talking 2008, 2009, was better than it is today. Better? So, I, I thought course. you were about to say worse. I'm no, surprised no, no, you said that. I think he's more of a killer I, I now. Think, I think he's an absolute ki cold-blooded killer now. I'm like surprised I'm surprised you said well, better. I, I was about to agree with... No, no, with, I with I, well, you think they're better now? A lot no, of I think, I think these guys are like fine-tuned like, I'm saying they were better. They were better it's footballers. Like the, it's like the debate between... Treble winners, right? People compare United to City, and mm -hmm. they both. It's it's a different era of the game. Yeah, it's different you know eras. I mean, I think it is it is hard to compare because yeah. the game. Maybe not. You shouldn't, compare, you shouldn't, compare. You shouldn't compare. But my, my the the reason I'm thinking that right is because you had you had Messi playing up against the likes of Raúl, Kaká, all these guys, right? Whereas all we're saying is a two horse race between Haaland and Mbappe, and then can you really name someone else that's the next level down? Whereas back in the day, you're going Messi, Ronaldo, yeah, okay. Ronaldinho, Ronaldo, Rubinho, all these guys, all these cultured names. Whereas now we're going... But then that was, that was probably because Messi and Ronaldo that. weren't about in that oh, era to oh, constantly oh, dominate the, the, the Ballon d'Or. Yeah, okay. And now Messi and Ronaldo are gone, we'll probably see a, a, a bit of a change up yeah, in the Ballon d'Or. Okay, like Messi and Ronaldo year. sucked the oxygen out of the room in terms of top, top talent because mm. they, yeah. they just did so much. That yeah. Like yeah. They, they were your two options. Yeah. Whereas before, before in those early days, like 2010, yeah. 2011, they were still it was coming very good players, but they're still coming to perform. Yeah, okay. still a lot of okay. yeah. So, yeah, and I do get what you're saying there, Nisha, yeah. 100%. Just uh, hypothetical, if Man United 99 were to play Man City today what, in a, in a one-off game, City, or the score was really score. I genuinely then. think United, the physicality, I think, I they, think they, they, there's it. aspects of the game that they'd have, in terms of the way that the game's changed, there's advantages that they would hold being the older team. Sure. But I, I don't think that any Prem team can it, it can beat that a prime city team over the course of 38 games yeah, in a season. I agree. Uh, it doesn't get better than what they do. Yeah. 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 In a one-off game, though. In a one-off game, anything can happen. Yeah. In a one -off game, Tottenham seems to do the best. In a anything can happen, as you saw in 1999, where you scored two goals in the last three well, minutes. Exactly. Exactly. On that note, boys, let's wrap it up for today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you, boys, for coming and joining me. Thank you. For we'll it. do it again next week, next Saturday. We will be back. We'll be better. Please, please subscribe. Please follow all of our socials and all that shabam. Yeah. And thank you if you if you've stayed this long. Unbelievable effort. Yeah, well, so, cool. so, so, cool. so thank you. Appreciate, this one quite a Appreciate it. <laughs> See you soon. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a wrap, boys. That's a wrap, boys.